رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي. So today, inshallah, I want to start off talking about two things. Number one is where we are. So you know, Sultan Bakra began with the three types of people. Then there was a call to the Quran and call to humanity. And then after that was the beginning of creation. And then after that was a long charge sheet regarding Bani Israel. That we gave you manna in salwa, we gave you this, we gave you, you know, the 12 wells. We did all this in your attitude and we told you to sacrifice the cow and all the things that happened, okay? Now, after this charge sheet is now complete, now the new topic is beginning, which is what will happen now is that now a new ummah, a new qibla, and the qibla is the symbolic gesture from which now there is a new ummah. So this is what's going to be discussed now. So now from here, the discussion is the qibla. And with the discussion of the qibla is the now, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, Yes alunaka, yes alunaka, Oh you people believe, and yes alunaka, Oh Prophet, they ask you. So this new ummah is now being formed. And the, the blueprint of the sharia is being given regarding this ummah. And now for the rest of this surah. Okay, so I wanted that to be inshallah ta'ala clear. So let us begin with <coughs> this ayah. Sayaqulu sufaha'u min al-nasi ma wallahum an qiblatihum allati kanu alayha. Sayaqul, soon they will say, because now the qibla is going to be changed. Sayaqulu sufaha'u min al-nas, some of the foolish people amongst the human beings will say, ma wallahum an qiblatihum allati kanu alayha. What has caused them to change their qibla? What type of religion is this? It's praying towards Jerusalem. As you know, the Muslims were praying towards Jerusalem. And now when the Prophet was in Mecca, when he was in Mecca, he was praying towards the Kaaba in a way where Jerusalem and the Kaaba aligned itself. Okay? He was praying at the at, at the side where the Prophet with the Kaaba and Jerusalem get aligned. Okay? So then... When the Prophet went to Medina, uh, Medina now the, it was a test for the people that were the Muhaj, the people in Mecca. It was a test for them because they had to put their backs towards the Kaaba and then they were praying towards Jerusalem. And then after this event that we're going to talk about, it became a test for the Muhaj, the, the Ansar, the, the companions of the Prophet وسلم, in Medina. It became a test for them. That now they have to turn their uh, turn the direction that was is other than the one that the Jews were already praying towards and the Muslims were already praying there and for because the 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 Quraysh the, Quraysh, the Muhajirin amongst the companions of the Prophet وسلم, they were very happy that we're going to turn back to the qibla that we always uh, that was you know the Kaaba they were happy for that but this was really a big test for the Ansar. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also, you know, questions were being raised. What will happen to the prayers of the people that prayed before, that were praying in the wrong direction all this time? They were praying towards Jerusalem. What will happen to their prayers? Then, you know, the Jews were also happy. Oh, at least, you know, they're following our prayer direction. I mean, what more do we want, right? And now that the, the prayer direction changed. Now you can imagine the type of propaganda that happened. Okay. And so, because this was a, a big uh, you know, this became a big propaganda. And so, uh, over here, I want to show you this, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, you see this, uh, uh, let's see if I can show you this. So, M Mecca is here, Medina is here, okay? Jerusalem is here. So, when the Prophet used to pray, he used to pray in such a way that he was facing towards the Kaaba and Jerusalem. This is Mecca. But when he came to Medina, now he has to either face Jerusalem or Mecca. It can't be both. So now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the command, which we'll read inshallah, now you can change your qibla. And this was the beginning of the symbolic gesture to say now a new ummah has been formed and the charge sheet against the former ummah has been placed and now a new ummah is going to be put in its place and put in its position. Okay, And so this is how the Quran sees itself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very quickly now, Soon the foolish people will say, what caused them to change their Qibla? Okay? It's not about the form. It's not about the structure. Right? We always get stuck 
re religious people always get stuck on the externalities, like the beard. That all is important. But what is more important is the spirit within it. This topic will also be coming uh, over and over again that I'm mentioning. Look, the East and the West, the Mashrik and Maghrib, the East and the West, they belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now a new Ummah is going to be formed. So now this ayah is very important. This is why we have now made you an Ummah. What type of Ummah? Wasatan. The middle Ummah, the balanced Ummah, the just Ummah. The role model ummah. You know, even the Prophet ﷺ said, Khairul umuri awsatiha. The best of affairs is the middle one. The middle is the best. Okay? وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا This word wasata comes again in, in, in this, uh, we will read it today probably. كَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُحَادَ عَلَى So you, O, o Ummah of Muhammad ﷺ, will do what? You'll be witnesses upon mankind. وَيَكُونُ رَسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا And the Messenger of Allah will be a witness upon you. وَمَا جَعَلْنَا قِبْلَ الَّتِي كُنْتَ عَلَيْهَا And we didn't make the Qibla that you were on before, meaning Jerusalem. إِلَّا لِنَعْلَمَ مَنْ يَتَّبِعُ رُسُلُ Except to know which one of you will actually follow the Prophet when he decides to change the direction. مِمَّا يَنْقَلِبُ عَلَىٰ آقِبَيْ And who amongst you turns to his heels, turns to his back? وَإِنْ كَانَتْ لَكَبِيرَةٌ It is a very difficult thing. It was a very difficult situation because of the propaganda and, and all the question it raised. إِنْ كَانَتْ لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الَّذِينَ حَدَ اللَّهِ It was a very difficult thing except for the people Allah had truly guided. Those people Allah had truly guided weren't that type of religion, religion who had ghaluv in their deen, who are stuck with the externalities. This is what happens, you know. If somebody... All his life, he's done prayers and he never heard Amin out loud. Then somebody comes and says, Amin, it's such a big thing. But the real spirit of the Salah, for example, which is the khashu of the Salah, which is the, the focus on Salah, you know, the, the intention of the Salah, that becomes less important. And then the externalities become more important. And we become more, more we react to the externalities more. And we are less worried about the internal uh, state of our being. Anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن كَانَتْ لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الَّذِينَ هَدَى اللَّهِ This was definitely a very difficult thing except for the people Allah guided. وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُذِيعْ إِمَانَكُمْ And Allah will not waste your iman. But here, the Mufassirin say, iman here means salah. Allah will not waste your previous sal sal the salawat, those people that died in Badr, for example. One thing about Surah Al-Baqarah, very, very important, especially because the sister surah is going to come next, which is Surah Al-Imran. I should mention this. Surah Al-Baqarah is Surah Al-Baqarah is basically revealed pre pre Badr, before Badr. And today we're going to end with the Badr of Bani Israel, the Badr of the Mus Ummah of Musa wasalam, as a preparation for the Badr of the Ummah of Muhammad wasalam. And Surah Al Imran, which is the next surah, is revealed after Uhud. And these are two important battles. In one, the Muslims won, and the other, the Muslims almost just about lost. Okay, so now. These two surahs are coming like this. Surah Al-Baqarah, right before the victory and right after Uhud, after the loss, Surah Al-Uhud is, uh, Surah Al-Imran is revealed. Uh, so, إِنْ كَانَتْ لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الَّذِينَ هَدَى اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُذِيعْ إِمَامَكُمْ Surah Al-Imran is also like this. There is a discussion with the Christians, which we will come to, and then after that, the discussion with the Ummah. Over here, there was a discussion regarding Bani Israel, and now, at this point, now the discussion turns to the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Okay. Wa ma kana and Allah subhanahu wa taala will not waste your iman. Inna Allah bin nasi la raufur rahim, and indeed Allah subhanahu wa taala is raufur rahim with the people. You know, He is rauf, He is kind and rahim. Now here is the command. Qad nara taqalluba wajhika fi sama, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We saw you, O Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, turning your face to the sky hoping and wishing for that day to come where the Qibla will be changed back to Makkah. So then change now your direction towards the Qibla that you have tarba, you have tarba, you have rida for. So turn your faces in the direction of Masjid al-Haram. Wherever you are, now turn your face. And you'll see how how much the repetition there is on this subject because of the level of propaganda 
that even the Jewish people, they were happy. Muslims are following one direction. Now they're all following another direction. So this became an opportunity for them to say things. So because of that, the Quran is emphasizing this over and over again. You'll see this. And a whole argument is given to this. And this is a very, very, very important gesture because now the old Ummah is being replaced and a new Ummah is being put in its place. Wherever you are, now face your direction towards the direction of the Muslim Haram. And the people that are given the book, those people that are objecting now to you changing the direction, they know definitely this is the true direction. It's in their books. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is not unaware of the things that you do. And if you had given all the signs to the people of the book, that this is the direction, you gave them all the signs, all the proofs, they will not follow your qibla. Nor are you going to follow their qibla. Nor are some are going to follow the qibla of the others. And if you follow their desires, and just you know, the, the conversation is to the Prophet ﷺ, but the intention is the companions of the Prophet and the Ummah in general. And if you follow their desires, after knowledge has come to you, then indeed you are the one that is the wrongdoers. Those people that have been given the book, they know it full well. Like they know their own sons. Now the discussion here is about the Qibla. So one translation could be, they know the Qibla like they know their own sons. Or the more common uh, popular tafsir is, يَعْرِفُونَهُ كَمَا يَعْرِفُونَ أَبْنَاءَهُمْ they, oh, they know you, O oh, Muhammad وسلم, like they know their own sons. وَإِنَّ فَرِيقًا مِنْهُمْ لَيَكْتُمُونَ الْحَقِّ And a group of them, they definitely hide the truth. Now this is going to become a big topic also as we move forward. Those people that keep hiding the truth. وَهُمْ يَعْلَمُونَ And they know it fully well. This is why it's very important that we have some more and more and more and more research on the, in the uh, the Old Testament particularly uh, to find uh, even their, the even more clear proofs of the uh, of the things that have been hidden. The truth is from your Lord. So don't be of those people that have any doubts. And for every, you know, uh, every uh, ummah, there is a goal or a direction. Fastabiqul khayrat, the real thing is, who does good deeds? Fastabiqul khayrat, you should be surpassing in doing good deeds, right? And, Aina ma takunu ya'ti bikum Allahu jami'a, and wherever you are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come to all, will, will, Aina ma takunu. Wherever you are, in the end, you're going to go back to Allah. Inna Allah ala kulli shay'in qadir. Wa min haythu kharajta, again, this is the emphasis here. Wa min haythu kharajta, fawalli wajhaka shatr al-masjid al-haram. O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wherever you are, turn your face in the direction of masjid al-haram. Inna hu lal haqqu min rabbik. This is definitely true from your Rabb. Wa ma Allahu bighafilin amma ta'amaloon. And Allah is not unaware of the things that they do. وَمِنْ حَيْثُ خَرَجْتَ فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Now again, same thing being repeated again. مِنْ حَيْثُ خَرَجْتَ Wherever you come out from, فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ Just face your direction now, from now on to Masjid al-Haram. وَحَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُمْ فَوَلُّوا وَجُوهَكَمْ شَطْرَ Again, wherever you are, face your direction towards the Qibla. لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَيْكُمْ حُجَّ so that there will not be an excuse against you if you don't do this because this is the right place and they have it in their books. If you don't turn to the right direction, then they will actually have an excuse against you. Then they'll have a hujja against you. The wrongdoers, they're the wrongdoers. They just argue for the sake of argument. Don't fear them. Fear me. You have to answer me. Don't be scared. وَأُتِمَّ نِعْمَةِ عَلَيْكُمْ And I want to complete my ni'mah upon you. Part of that ni'mah is what? That now there is an ummah, the ummah of Muhammad وسلم, with its own direction, with its own uh, direction, which is it's the original qibla, and its reconnection with Ibrahim alayhi salatu re-establishing that connection. 
وليتم نعمتي عليكم لعلكم تحتدون so that Allah so that my ni'mah will be complete upon you and you la'allakum tahtadun and that is that you will be guided kama arsalna fikum rasulan minkum now if you remember this is that connection with ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam also remember ibrahim prayed to allah uh, that allah please send a messenger amongst them right that will do these four things yatlu alayhim ayatihi wa yu'allimu alkitab wa alhikma wa yuzakkihim over there, Tazkiyah is mentioned last time. This ayah, this ayah comes four times. In one time, the ayah that we have already read, where Ibrahim does the dua for Rasulullah to do these four things, Tazkiyah is mentioned for, first when Allah mentions it, when Ibrahim mentions it in dua, he mentions it last. كَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا فِيكُمْ رَسُولًا مِنْكُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْكُمْ آيَاتِنَا Like we have now sent a messenger to you, a minkum from amongst you, what does he do? He does the same thing that Ibrahim did the dua for. Yatlu alaykum ayatina. He recites to you the ayat. Wa yuzakkikum and he purifies you. Wa yuallimukum al kitab and he teaches you the book. Wal hikma and the hikma. Hikma is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and also Yasin wal Quran al Hakim. The hikma within Quran. Wa yuallimukum ma lam takunu ta'lamun and he teaches you the things you did not know. Now the discussion now is the qibla has changed. Now is the discussion of how much are you committed to Islam? How much are you willing to sacrifice for Islam? How much are you willing to have the right attitude in surrendering towards Islam? Remember me, I will remember you. This is very, very important. And give thanks to me. And don't be ungrateful. Kufr means... Rejecting the truth, kufr also means to be ungrateful. Kufr has both of these meanings. وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا O you people who believe, difficult times are coming. So now what do you have to do? وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Get help with sabr, والصَّلَاةِ and salah. إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ And when you are in a difficult situation and you're having sabr and you have sabr with tawakkal on Allah, then إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الصَّابِرِينَ مَعَ means help. You know, it is to it means help. Ma'a means just doesn't mean with. Allah is with the Allah is with everyone. In Allah Ma'a Sabirin mean Allah has special help with the people that are in the state of sabr. Why are they in sabr? Because they're struggling for the deen. Because they're trying hard for the deen. Okay? This becomes clear. Now what is the ultimate sacrifice? That you die in the cause, right? Uh don't say for the person who has died in the cause of Allah that he's dead. But in fact, they are living, but you don't perceive it. You don't perceive it yet. Now, notice this ayah. It's extremely, extremely important. We will definitely, definitely, definitely test you of something of fear. Not complete, be shay'im. Small test, but for us it'll be severe. Of fear, ju, starvation even. Naqsim min al-amwal. You will lose your wealth. Wal anfus. And you will lose lives. Wa thamarat. And your fruits, you know, one is the harvest, the fruits and the harvest. The other is the fruits of your work. You know, the Prophet ﷺ said, go to the book, and the harvest is ready to be taken. So all the hard work gone to, uh, gone uh, in the worldly sense, world gone to waste. But this was the command of Rasulullah ﷺ, and the command of Allah. وَبَشِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ And give good tidings to the people who have sabr. اللَّهُمَ جَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ Those people, when difficulty befalls them, what do they say? قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ We are Allah's. وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ And in the end, we have to go back to Allah. أُولَٰئِكَ عَلَيْهِمْ صَلَوَاتٌ مِّن رَبِّهِ These are the people who have the blessings of Allah. مِّن رَبِّهِمْ وَرَحْمَةً And the mercy of Allah. وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُحْتَدُونَ And these are the people that are guided. اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ And may Allah not test us too much, but this is test. This is going to come. Yeah. Did you think you'll say you believe and you won't be tested? Muslims are being tested, you know. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now, He is referring to Safa and Marwa. 
Now, why is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala referring to Safa and Marwa? Safa and Marwa was a good example of sabr and struggle and tawakkul on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and its connection with Hajj, which is also a subject that's going to come, inshallah. Inna Safa wal Marwata min sha'air illa. Sha'air, sha'air is from shu'ur, having consciousness, recognition, understanding. Inna Safa wal Marwa. Safa and Marwa, they are min sha'air illa. They're from the symbols of Allah. They give you recognition of Allah, right? فَمَنْ حَجَّ الْبِعْتَ أَوْ اِعْتَمَرَ فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَطَوَّفَ بِهِمَا So whoever goes for Hajj or he, oh, he goes for Umrah, there's no harm in doing tawaf on Safa and Marwa because these things bring to your mind the sabr that Hajra alayhi salatu wa salam alayha, salam alayha which she had. وَمَنْ تَطَوَّى خَيْرًا Whoever does this voluntarily, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ شَاكِرٌ عَلِيمٌ Then Allah is shakir. You know, we do shukr means we are grateful. Allah is shakir means He's not grateful. It means He has value for it. Allah has value for what you do. Shakirun alim and He has full well. He is full. He has fully and He has all knowledge and He also has value for the things that you do. Right? He has value for that. Inna Now over here, now the, one of the major topics that begins is the hiding of the book of Allah. Now over here, I want to just take you to the uh, discussions that are going to be, we are going to be having. So, it starts with the discussion of the Qibla. Then after that, we discuss the tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which we just discussed. Okay, and so this is the topic we're going to discuss. But in this is also that, you know, don't hide the book of Allah. Don't hide the book of Allah, because this is a big, 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 big sin, big sin. Hiding the Book of Allah and the teachings of the Book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلْنَا مِنَ الْبَيِّنَاتِ وَالْهُدَى مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا بَيَّنَّاهُ لِلنَّاسِ فِي الْكِتَابِ Indeed, those people who hide whatever we have sent down of the clear proofs and guidance مِنْ بَعْدِ after we have made it clear for the... Allah made it clear and then they hide it. Meaning Allah makes it clear in Qur'an and then they hide it in their books. This is one meaning, okay? أُولَئِكَ يَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَلْعَنُهُمُ اللَّائِنُونَ they are the people Allah has la'na over. La'na means curse. Curse means Allah's mercy is taken away. And then the, those that curse also curse them. This could mean the angels curse them or on the day of judgment the people will curse them or so on and so forth. Illa except. Illa ladina tabu wa aslahu wa bayyanu. Except for those people who do tawbah and make amends wa aslahu wa bayyanu. Then they make it clear. Yes, yes. This is, this is in our books. This is in our Torah that's written here. Ula'ika atubu alayhim. These are the people that I will definitely forgive. Even today there are people who know, who know the truth, but they hide it. They hide the Dead Sea Scrolls. They hide these other books, the, the Apocrypha books, not the canon, canonical books, but the Apocrypha books. They hide it still, in which there's so many teachings that point towards Islam. Wa'ana tawwabu rahim. The books that have been written about James, the brother of Jesus. They all point towards Islam. Even the writers, one of the major writers of that book, I forget his name. Uh, he himself admits this. Inshallah, I'll show this uh, if I remember to do that. Inna ladina kafaru wa matu wa hum kuffar. Inna ladina kafaru, those people who deny the truth. Wa matu, and then they die. Hum kuffar. They are now, they're done. Ula'ika alayhim la'natullahi wal malaikati wa nasi ajma'in. So they have the, the mercy is taken from them and the dua of the mercy to be taken away from them. The curse is put upon them by Allah and the angels of all mankind. That you didn't show us the, what the truth is in your books. We could have been guided. But because, because of you, you were leading people astray. Why? Because you didn't want to lose your, lose your positions. Because if you lost your position, then people would be following the Prophet ﷺ. fiha <laughs> In it they will remain. لَا يُخَفَّفْ وَنْهُمُ الْعَذَابِ And the punishment will not, not be made less for them. وَلَا هُمْ يُنْذَرُونَ And they will be given no, uh, no waiting time. Okay. Now this ayah is very, these, this ayah and the next ayah are very, very important. The most comprehensive ayah, the next ayah is, it's one of the longer, there are many long ayahs in this surah. Uh, and this is one of them. This could be the, called the ayah, ayatul ayah. This is the ayah. It is the most comprehensive single ayah about the ayat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I'll share that with you as, when it comes. Wa ilahukum ilahu wahid. So here we are, we are over here right now. This is the issue of there is only one God. Wa ilahukum wahid. 
right? La ilaha illa huwa rahmanur rahim. There's no divine authority other than him. He is a rahman. He is a rahim. Inna fi khalq al-samawati wal-ard. Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth. Now, what are these? These are not just creations. These are process. This is a whole process. All this is happening together. For why? For you to just to survive. All these things have to happen. Right? In the creation of the heavens and the earth. In the alteration of the day and the night. And by the ships that flow on the ocean. How Allah made the ship. Right? The ship doesn't sink. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the water so that it's of a certain uh, certain dense, density that the wood can float on it, for example. Right? This is not just by coincidence. This is how it was planned. It was planned that man travel from one place to another place and bring the goods from there and bring it back here and so that man can have civilization. And so everything from the heavens and the earth, وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ In the alteration of the day and the night. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the sky blue? How many dollars... Uh, millions of dollars were spent to understand that the the window screen should be blue and green. And so Allah gave us a blue sky. Imagine if Allah gave us a pink sky or red sky. It would hurt our eyes. So many people. And the alteration of the day and the night. And also our biological rhythms that are going on. So all this is synchronized. See, it's not a matter of uh, of like uh, something just... Uh, it, it's, not an ac it's not a matter of it's not an accident. It's a matter of it's synchronized to be everything working together, all the pieces working together. It's kind of like, you know, the eye is one whole, right? If I take any part of the eye, the eye cannot see. If I take the, the eyeball away, if I take the veins inside away, if I take the retina in it, if I take the corns of the eyes in it, if I take the lens away, if I take the, if I take any part of the eye, it ceases to see. All of it has to be there at once for me be, to be able to see. So this is the same thing here. In the creation of the heavens and the earth, and for the, all the benefits it gives mankind. And for whatever Allah sends down from the sky, and then Allah causes the dead land to become alive. Now, this can have two meanings. Uh, one meaning is that you know the rain goes and there's no pasture there's no uh, there's no uh, herbage there's no grass and the rain comes and then the grass comes up the other is in terms of the creation process there was a time where the earth was dead there was no life on earth how did life on earth begin it started with these rains it started with water so it could be referring to the that process also so, وَمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ مَا إِنْ فَأَحْيَا بِهِ الْأَرْضَ بَعْدَ مَوْتِهَا وَبَثَّ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ دَابَّةٍ This is very important. You know, people look at UFOs and aliens and there's this uh, other creatures. There is no walking creature. All walking creatures rather. وَبَثَّ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ دَابَّةٍ Allah put all dabba, all walking creatures. Where? فِي الْأَرْضِ Right? In the earth. وَبَثَّ وَبَثَّ فِيهَا مِنْ كُلِّ دَابَّةٍ وَتَصْلِيفِ الرِّيَهَا All the dabba are on this earth. فِيهَا فِيهَا is referring to earth. مِنْ كُلِّ دَابَّةٍ وَتَصْلِيفِ الرِّيَهَا And in the, in the movement of the, of the winds, وَالسَّحَاب and, and the clouds, وَالسَّحَاب المُسَخَّر بَيْنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ And how the clouds move between the, the earth and the sky between this indeed in all this are signs for people who have understanding right <coughs> then Allah continues and after all this right they're amongst people who take other than Allah a partner and they love those idols or those gods as if they should worship Allah. As for the true believers, they have shadeed hub for Allah, extreme love for Allah. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. If only the people that are wrongdoers could see when they see the punishment, they will see that day that all the power belong to Allah. Allah didn't give His power to these you know, didn't divide his power with these different idols and gods. No, just one Allah. 
أن القوة لله جميعا وأن الله شديد أن الله شديد العذاب and Allah is so severe in doing punishment. In this world, if you lie, nothing happens to your tongue. Nothing happens. If you steal, nothing happens to your hand. But in that next world, that's a whole different story. Is the الَّذِينَ تُبَعُوا تُبِعُوا The day where those people that were followed, because they were leading people astray, they're, they're going to be now, all these people that followed us, now that's like a liability, all these people following them on the day, that it'll, it'll come out on the day of judgment. Is They'll declare innocence, oh we have nothing to do with these people following us. Is From the people that were following them, they'll declare their innocence. And they'll see the punishment and all their relationships, right, all their ties, will be broken that there's no one to help you that day. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ تُبِعُوا You know these leaders and followers, what will happen to them on the Day of Judgment? This is being discussed. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ تُبِعُوا لَوْ أَنَّ لَنَا كَرَّةً If we can only go back, فَتَبَرَّعُوا مِنْهُمْ We would declare our innocence from them. كَمَا تَبَرَّعُوا مِنَّا Like how they're behaving towards us today. They're like, oh no, no, we have nothing to do with these people. We, meaning the followers, Right? We gave our wealth to these people. We gave our time to these people. We loved these people. We followed these people. And today they're declaring, no, we have nothing to do with these people. So now their hasra, their, their desire and their disgust and their pain is being discussed here. لو أن لنا كرة فتبرأوا منهم كما تبرأوا منا they, Then there was only if we can go back. We will declare innocence from them the way they're declaring innocence from us. كذلك يريهم الله أعمالهم this is how Allah showed them the result of their actions. Hasaratin alayhim. Now it's just hasara, hasra, has, hasarat, has, you know, just a, uh, just a, like, oh, I wish, I wish, you know, just, I hadn't done this. Hasaratin alayhim, right? Uh, bi kharijina min nar and they're not going to come out of the fire, right? So, hasaratin alayhim, regrets, okay? Ya yuhannas, this is now very, very important. A new topic. And the topic is halalan tayyiba. Ya yuhannas, O mankind. And the discussion here is to the all mankind. And then the discussion will change to the believers. You'll see this. Ya yuhannas, kulu mimma fil ard halalan tayyiba. O mankind, eat from the earth that is halal, number one. This is the outside. We care so much about zabiha and, you know, everything facing the qibla and bismillah akbar. But, but, we have genetically manipulated meat, genetically manipulated food, genetically manipulated uh, fruits, right? That, uh, that, so tayyib, it's not tayyib. We need halal and tayyib. Halal and tayyib. Halal is important too, but tayyib is also important. That makes it wholesome. The, the external aspect and the internal aspect, both. وَلَا تَتَّبِيُوا خُطُوَاتِ shaytan. Don't follow the footsteps of shaytan. Why footsteps? Because shaytan doesn't make you jump. It takes one small step, then another small, small step. So you don't mind taking the small step. Oh, it's just one small step. And then the next small step. This is, وَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينٌ He is your enemy. He is your enemy. Look at what shaitan has done to humanity. Brought them to the very things Qur'an said don't do. To the alcohol, to the gambling, and to the... Uh, the, the sexual anarchy that's there. All riba, the interest system, all that. Why? Who, how, how come everything turned against, uh, all the teachings of, of, of Quran? Because shaitan's there. Innahu lakum aduwwum mubin. Innama ya'murukum bisu'i wal fahshai wa antakulu ala Allahi ma la ta'lamun. Indeed, he commands you to do su'a. He commands you to do evil. Wal fahsha. And to be immodest. Wa antakulu ala Allahi ma la ta'lamun. And say things about Allah that which they, they, uh, that which you don't know. This is very interesting. Uh, you know, when people have hallucinations, especially some mental patients, you can see the effect of shaitan because it's very interesting. Majnoon means crazy, and jinn means jinn, and jinn and shaitan is part of the jinn world, right? When people become mentally ill, they start one thing, very interesting thing happens, and uh, I'm going to show that to you, uh, right now. Let me just uh, bring that up. So here's a very interesting thing. Schizophrenia, I believe, being a Muslim and especially dabbling with psychology like almost all my life, right? Uh, schizophrenia is a state of where shaitan has control of someone, okay? Because your IQ changes. I mean, there's so much research on this. Your, your, 
your your intelligence changes so many things about you change that it's like you're not even the same person you become a split personality right with schizophrenia and what happens specifically because now shaitan has because they're majnun and i showed you the relationship between majnun and jinn okay and so when shayateen when the jinns are affecting someone right they it's very interesting when people have schizophrenia and hallucinations and all these things why is it they always talk about religion and they talk about what would be considered quote unquote blasphemous things, which is in this ayah, you say things about Allah that you which you don't know. And when you have schizophrenia, you're always doing negative, you're hearing these negative voices like kill your uh, wife or you know, do this or this person speaking bad about you. These are the types, it's always this negativity. And it's a very interesting phenomenon. Uh, but I'm not going to go into this more than this right now, but I'm just opening the door to it that there is something very, very significant about this ayah in particular. It is very, very interesting, especially for somebody like me. He indeed commands you. When you've lost your senses, then he's just commanding you in the direction that he wants. وَالْفَحْشَاءِ in modesty. And that you say things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you don't even know. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُمُ اتَّبِعُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ قَالُوا بَلْ نَتَّبِعُ مَا أَلْفَيْنَ عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا When it is said to them, follow that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, قَالُوا They say, بَلْ نَتَّبِعُ مَا أَلْفَيْنَ عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَنَا But we're going to only follow the way of our forefathers. Our forefathers, that's the way. وَلَوْ وَلَوْ And then Allah now asks here the question, a soul-searching question. أَوَلَوْ كَانَ آبَاءُهُمْ لَا يَعْقِلُونَ شَيْئًا Even if their forefathers had no understanding, that understanding is coming to you. It wasn't with them before. وَلَا يَحْتَدُونَ Nor when they were guided. So you're still going to listen to them? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you know, these are just excuses, right? So now Allah describes how these people are. مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا كَمَثَلِ الَّذِي يَنْعِقُوا بِمَا لَا يَسْمَوْا إِلَّا دُعَاءُ وَنِدَاءُ The example of the people who reject the truth in, in terms of their hearing, spiritually being able to hear, is like, you know, when a person whistles to his animal, okay? The animal hears nothing but دُعَاءُ وَنِدَاءُ Something to call them or some noise to you know, uh, to, to call them or some noise to uh, get their attention. They are deaf, they are dumb, blind, and they will not understand. Okay? Uh, Over there was or or oh, كما قال like this over here is يا أيها الذين آمنوا يا أيها الذين آمنوا كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم oh you people who believe eat of the things that are pure that we have provided you wash and in addition to that وشكروا الله وشكروا لله إن كنتم إياه تعبدون and always give shukr of Allah if you are truly believers and if you worship Him what should you say at the end of eating food Alhamdulillah this is the reason okay so now. Uh, this is the, these are the verses about the lawful and pure, pure food. Okay. So that was the discussion of the one ayah, the, the oneness of Allah that we discussed with the, the ayah, ayah, ayah tul ayat, the ayah that has so many ayat in it, right? And then the pure food. And now we're going to go into the discussion of genuine virtue. What is the concept of virtue? What is bir? What is righteousness? What is goodness? What is actually goodness? What does it mean to be good? Right? So this is the discussion that's going to come now. After after this discussion, this is still continuing about the food. Indeed, the haram uh, for you is what is dead. Okay, what dama and the blood, walahmil khinzir and the meat of the khinzir, the meat of the pig, but not just the meat, the whole of the pig. There is some fiqhi discussion about the hair of the pig, but I'm not going to go into that right now. And about the skin of the pig, some of the ulama also discuss this. But any, anyway. The ayah is, innama definitely only. Harama alaykum, completely haram for you is the dead. This doesn't include the dead of the sea, like the dead fish and things like this. Wadamma and the blood. Okay? But according to the Hanafis, it includes the dead of the uh, sea, but not the fish. Wadam and blood. Blood when? When blood is outside the body, not inside the body. Walahmil khinzir and the uh, meat of the pig. Over here, just no one principle. If it says meat of the pig in Quran, then the meat of the pig. Why more than that? That is because the, from a fiqhi perspective, I'm not going to uh, go into the whole lecture here, but very simply that the main purpose of the pig is for what use he, the a pig is. It's for meat. So if the meat is haram, the main purpose of it is haram. The main thing is haram. Everything under it is also haram. This is the Hanafi position. 
And whatever is made halal other than in the name of Allah. But if you're forced, not desiring it. And if you have to take it, you then have to take the minimum amount. Okay? Then, then you can if you're forced, like the Muslims in China are being forced to eat pork, especially in Ramadan. I'm hearing that they're being forced to do this. So then they have to then at that time, if they want to save their lives, then they have, they have, then they have to, uh, you know, if, if they're being forced to do that, then they're doing this out of necessity and not desiring it. Not desiring it, not going, not transgressing. Only then taking that much that you need to survive. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلْنَا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَيَشْتَرُونَ بِهِ يَشْتَرُونَ بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا Indeed, those people who... And why is food being connected with the issue of hiding the truth? Because halal food makes an impact upon you. Okay, it has an effect upon you. So if you're eating halal and tayyiba, it has an impact upon you. If you're eating haram, then you'll do haram. You eat haram, you do haram. And the haram that is being discussed here is... You know, because this is indirectly saying these people that are now hiding the truth, they've been eating haram. They've been selling the ayat of Allah. They have been, uh, they have been unfaithful to, to, to their own, uh, the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَكْتُمُونَ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَيَشْتَرُونَ بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا This word, ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا, ثَمَنًا يَشْتَرُونَ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا comes into the Baqarah a lot. Those people who hide the truth in what Allah has sent down in the book and they sell it for a small price. They don't put anything in their stomachs except for the fire. And Allah will not talk to them on the day of judgment. And he will not purify them. He won't even talk to them. This is how disgusted Allah is from the people that hide the truth that is already in their book. And for them is a very painful punishment. These are the people who have purchased ضلاله, the wrong way for the guidance. And punishment for, instead of forgiveness. What makes them so patient over the hellfire? Again, this is a rhetorical, uh, you can say, way of uh, making the point. This is because Allah sent down the book in haq, in truth. And those people who are in, 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 in difference of opinions regarding the book, meaning that they have, the book that they have, they are like now in many different diversions and split, split groups. Okay? Now this ayah is extremely, extremely important. What is good deed? Now over here is the discussion again about the Qibla. But also what is being discussed here is what is real good? You, now I told you Surah Al-Baqarah and Al Imran, these are twin surahs. Even the Prophet has given the name Mu'abba Zatayn, uh, 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 Zahrawain, sorry. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the name, these are the two lights. These two surahs are like lights. Like Surah Al-Falaq and Nas, Mu'abba Zatayn, these are Zahrawain. Okay, and so the discussion about the change of Qibla is coming here just slightly, but what is being discussed is the, the true virtue isn't facing here or there. This is not the point. But what is real virtue, the essence of virtue, what is real gur, good, what is real bir, that is being discussed here. And that is, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَنْتُ وَلُّوا وَجُوهَكُمْ قِبْلَ الْمَشْرَقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ Righteousness is not, or, but rather if it said لَيْسَ الْبِرُّ it would mean righteous is not at all. لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ means that it is not only righteous. لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَنْتُ وَلُّوا وَجُوهَكُمْ قِبْلَ الْمَشْرَقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ That you face yourselves towards the east or the west. وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ But true virtue is, number one, with your own self, doing good to your own self. Number one, مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ Whoever believes in Allah. وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَ And whoever believes in the Day of Judgment and the angels. وَالْكِتَابِ And the books. وَالنَّبِيِّينَ And the prophets. Now instead of Qutub, it says Kitab. Al-Kitab. And Al-Kitab here in this is Quran. Or all the books of Allah are Al-Kitab. Okay. وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ One meaning is, He gives His wealth out of the love of Allah. عَلَى حُبِّهِ عَلَى حُبِّهِ Hubbihi meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Zameer is going to Allah. Or, وَآتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ He gives his wealth, despite love for this wealth, he gives it. He gives, uh, he gives it away. To who? The will qurba, to his near relatives that really need it. You know, we give money to faraway people, but our own family sometimes needs it. 
واليتامى, and the orphans, والمساكينة, and مسكين, the people who are helpless, they can't do anything. Even if there are some people that are full-bodied, their body looks great, they can work. But psychologically, they're, they're in a state, they can't help themselves. وابن السبيل, and those that are traveling, lost, those who have lost their way while traveling, especially in the olden days, even nowadays, you'll see, you know, truckers, they'll pick up somebody that has lost his way or needs a ride somewhere because the car is broken down and they don't have the money to, you know, fix the tire or something. وابن السبيل والسائلين, and those people that ask, وفي الرقاب, and whose necks are tied up. Who are those? Those are slaves, freeing the slaves, right? Or the people that are in debt. وَأَقَامُ الصَّلَاةِ And then they establish the prayer. وَآتُ الزَّكَاةِ And they give the zakat. In addition to giving zakat, Allah mentions before that. This is why when the Prophet was asked, وسلم, is there, do we have to give anything more than zakat? The Prophet read this ayah. This is mentioning zakat. In addition to that, it's saying that despite love for the wealth, give. Right? So good to yourself. Then good to others. Then aqimu salah wa atu zakat. This is what the human, the way human fitra works. The if the fitra is good, this is the way. And all the relationships are what wal mufuna bi ahdim ida ahadu, and they keep their promises when they make them. Between employer, employee, husband, and wife, between everybody, there's a relationship. There's an understand. There's an ahad between everyone. Wal mufuna bi ahdim ida ahadu, and and the highest bir is those who stand up for the truth, who fight for the truth. And those who will have sabr, when, when they connect it with the previous ayat, right? And then, over here, in times of war and difficulty and adversity, these are the people that are truthful. Muttaqoon, they are the people that have taqwa. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Allahumma rabbana ja'alna minhum. Ameen, Allahumma ameen. Now this ayah here is extremely important. It is about qisas, about capital punishment and how Islam considers capital punishment. You see, cap, what's interesting is, I want you to consider this. In Islam, when there's capital punishment, it's not considered a crime against the state. It's considered a crime against the family. And in the case of rape or adultery, it is considered a crime against the state. So when somebody has done murder, the murderer is caught and brought to the family and the family decides what they want to do. And so somebody should do, somebody needs to do research on this, uh, the, 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 um, on the way that Islam wants to handle this situation versus the way uh, that it is being held, being done currently in the modern times. So anyway, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, O you people who believe, kutiba alaykumul qisas. Qisas, retribution, has been ordained for you. Kutiba alaykumul qisas, it has been written for you, it's been ordained for you. Fil qatla, regarding qatl. Al hurru bil hurri, a free person for a free person. What this means is that in the, in the time before Islam, a free person, for example, uh, was killed and he'd be like, okay, then take two of my slaves and kill them. Why kill me? Kill them. Okay. So these types of things were happening in short. So whoever killed, if it's a slave, a slave will be killed. If it's a free person, a free person will be killed. A female did it, she will be killed. So al-hurru bil-hurri wal-abdu bil-abdi wal-untha bil-untha, meaning whoever did it will be killed. فَمَنْ أُفِيَ لَهُ مِنْ أَخِي شَيْءٌ فَاتِّبَاءٌ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And whoever forgives his brother, right, they're still brothers in this case. فَمَنْ أُفِيَ لَهُ مِنْ أَخِي شَيْءٌ Whoever forgives his brother of anything فَاتِّبَاءٌ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Then it should be followed in ma'roof in a good manner. وَأَدَاءٌ إِلَيْهِ بِإِحْسَانٍ And if there has to be blood money given, then it should be given with ihsan. It should be given with uh, the best of manners. Because what, the loss was no matter what still great. But the, but the, the right is there for qisas. Okay? And so, أَذَاءٌ إِلَيْهِ بِإِحْسَانٍ ذَلِكَ تَخْفِيفٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَرَحْمَةٌ Over here, I will mention one thing. That in psychology, what we say is, in criminal psychology, we say the uh, risk of the crime or the risk of punishment versus the benefit. So let's say if I'm going to steal a million, million dollars from the bank, but my, my, my risk is I'll be in jail for six months. So in that case, the question is, 
is it worth it for me to uh, to steal from the bank? Well, in this case, it is. What Islam wants is to increase the risk so that the benefit is no matter what, it is less. Okay? So, uh, as far as the blood money is concerned, so if they say we'll forgive you, but we want something in return, uh, and whoever goes beyond the limits after that for him is a uh, painful punishment. Walakum, this very important ayah. Walakum fil qisasi hayatun ya ulul albab. And for you, in retribution, life for life is life. You find life. Walakum fil qisasi hayatun ya ulul albab. Oh, people of understanding, there's life for you in doing this. If you're always forgiving and forgiving and forgiving and forgiving, no. There should be a balance between the forgiving and taking justice. Why? Because then people will see, oh, and because, in, especially in the way that it's in Islam, you know, they're not locked up in jail. It is, it is made a, it is made for everyone to see. And so, وَلَكُمْ فِي الْقِصَاصِ حَيَاتٌ يَا أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you will have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then people will also be able to realize that, that, you know, because if you give punishments behind the scenes, no one sees it, they don't get a sense of the Day of Judgment. The Day of Judgment is going to be worse than this. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذَا حَذَرَ أَحَذَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ إِنْ تَرَكَ خَيْرَ الْوَصِيَّةً لِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ It has been ordained for you, written for you, إِذَا حَذَرَ أَحَذَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ When one of you is in his deathbed, أَنْ تَرَكَ خَيْرَ الْوَصِيَّةً That he should leave some good wasiya, good, uh, in, you know, uh, wasiya for his inheritance. لِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ For his parents and the near ones, بِالْمَعْرُوفِ حَقًا عَلَى الْمُتَّقِينَ This is the حَقْ of the muttaqin. Now obviously this ayah gets replaced by the ayahs in Sutul uh, Ma'ida, uh, which will give us the laws of inheritance. Okay? And you will find, this is the, uh, this is the first example of Nasikh and Mansukh that uh, I'm showing you right now. So this gets replaced by that ayah, but we're going to see another one just in a little bit. فَمَنْ بَدَّلَهُ بَعْدَ مَا سَمِعْهُ As for the, as for the, as for the wasiyah, the, the, uh, the, the, the will, okay? فَمَنْ بَدَّلَهُ Whoever changes it بَعْدَ مَا صَمِعُهُ After he's heard it فَإِنَّمَا إِثْمُهُ عَلَى الَّذِينَ يُبَدِّلُونَ The sin will be on the person who has changed it. إِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيُّنْ عَلِيمٌ Indeed Allah hears and He knows everything. You can just read about all the fights that and lawsuits and the, that go on regarding inheritance and, 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 and between families. فَمَنْ خَافَ مِنْ مُوسٍ جَنَفًا Okay, and whoever fears that uh, the attester, the person that's the, you can say, the, the wali or the, the attester, the person in charge of, the, of, of executing the will, that he will do something wrong, or that he will, um, you know, make an error, or he will make some ithm, he will make some sin, فَأَصْلَحَ بَيْنَهُمْ Then some process should take place to make islah, to make something good, to make rectification, to make a correction. فَأَصْلَحَ بَيْنَهُمْ let there be a slah baynahum between the person who has who has been wronged and the attester. Okay, so some process you can say this can happen in many different ways. Uh, there can be an oversight committee that always overlooks things like this, or uh, amongst family, if there's no institute that's doing it, then amongst human beings, members of the family, and so on and so forth. Fala ithma alay, then there's no sin. For example, somebody can say, well, dad, remember he told you that in front of me that he's going to give me such and such. So something like this, you can say. Inna Allah ghafoor rahim. Indeed, Allah is ghafoor rahim. Now here's the uh, laws of fasting. Now you'll find this, that it's going to it's gonna go from mu'amalat, things of, issues of society to worship, issues of society to worship, issues of society to worship. And in the end, it will be all about money. Okay. So, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum as siyam O you people who believe ordained for you is fasting kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum as it was ordained for the people before you la'allakum tattaqoon So you fast to get taqwa. Okay? And then, this fasting has been ordained in which month? The month in which Qur'an has been revealed. Allah could have chosen any month but He chose the month of Ramadan. Now, the next ayah is an ayah in which er, at first, uh, fasting when it was ordained it was made mandatory Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also allowed a way out if people had difficulties or something like this. This ayah can still apply for people that are old or that can't fast, but 
This ayah first came for people to get into the habit of fasting before the main ayah, which is the next ayah regarding fasting. Ayyama ma'adudat, just for a few days, man kana minkum maridan, whoever amongst you is sick, aw ala safarin, or he's on traveling, fa'iddatu min ayyamin ukhr, let him complete the days on another day. Wa ala ladhina yutiquna fidyatu ta'amu miskin, and whoever وَعَلَى الَّذِينَ يُطِيقُونَ فِدْيَةُ تَعَامُ مِسْكِينَ And whoever can, then they have to give fidya. تَعَامُ الْمِسْكِينَ They have to feed the miskin, the people that are poor. فَمَنْ تَطَوَّى خَيْرًا فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ Whoever does this voluntarily is good for him. وَأَنْ تَسُومُ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ But it's better for you if you fast. إِن كُنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ So this ayah was then replaced by this verse. شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن شهر رمضان the month of month of Ramadan is the one in which Quran was revealed. What is it? هدى للناس guidance for mankind. وبينات من الهدى and has clear proofs of the guidance. It shows the why is there salah? Why is what? What are the bayinat? What are the clear proofs that this is really the book of Allah? This is the divine book of Allah subhanahu wa taala Himself to human beings, and that you feel that if you're close to Quran, especially in the month of Ramadan. والفرقان and فرقان is that thing that distinguishes between haq and batil okay faman shahida minkum ash-shahr falyasum and whoever fasts in the month of ramadan let him fast sorry whoever faman shahida minkum ash-shahr falyasum whoever witnesses the month now there is witnessing this shahada and shahada ala shahada the person who sees the moon and the person who sees who witnesses the witness of, witnessing of the person who saw the moon and then from there it goes on فَمَنْ شَهِدَ مِنْكُمْ مُشْحَرَ فَلْيَسُمْ Whoever witnesses the month, let him then fast. Then the fasting begins. وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيدًا That this part is the same as before. مَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ مَرِيدًا أَوْ عَلَىٰ سَفَرٍ فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخْرٍ Whoever is sick or he's traveling, فَعِدَّةٌ مِنْ أَيَّامٍ أُخْرٍ Let him complete it on, on other days. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمْ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ الْعُسْرِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to make things easy for you. He doesn't want to make things hard for you. And why is this? This is the training to make Allah takbir of Allah. To make Allah great. To make Allah supreme. Not just in the loudspeakers, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. But that no, you have taqwa of Allah. You apply the laws of Allah. Bring the laws of Allah in society. You do, you do iqamatu deen. You establish the deen of Allah. And this is why, what do you do in Eid? After the fasting is done, you say, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Wallillahi alam. You do this, why? Because, لِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا حَذَاكُمْ So you make Allah great and supreme. كَلِمَةِ اللَّهِ يَأُلْيَا Make the word of Allah most supreme. Meaning, practically make it more supreme. لِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا حَذَاكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And this is connected with the topic of jihad that will come. Which is the practical process of making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala great. You know, if, you are, if you're saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, but the land you live in, not one inch of that land is according to the laws of Allah, then Allah is not great. You have to make Allah great. In reality, Allah is great. The whole universe belongs to Him. He doesn't need us to make Him great in any way. But he, this is our test. This is the test. لِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَذَاكُمْ So that you make Allah supreme. عَلَى مَا هَذَاكُمْ With the guidance He's given you. What is this guidance going to do if it's just in a book? It has to be put into practice. لِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَذَاكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And then you give shukr to Allah for the guidance He's given you. Look at all these commandments that Allah has given us. He's given us the commandments regarding capital punishment, regard, uh, laws of inheritance, how to, what is real virtue, and so on and so forth. And then also, in this month, when you get close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَإِذَا سَعَى لَكَ إِبَادِ عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٍ and when my servant, O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he asks you about me, فَإِنِّي قَرِيب I am definitely very near him. أُجِيبُ الدَّعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانْ I definitely respond when my when a caller makes a call to me. But here are the two conditions. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي Let him respond to me too. وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا be And let him believe in me. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ So that they will have رُشْد. If you see here, لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ and before this was لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And before that was لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Okay, so this is the part that is talking about fasting. Now, one more part about fasting here. أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ لَيْلَةُ الصِّيَامِ رَفَثُوا إِلَىٰ نِسَائِكُمْ It is halal for you um, in, the, in, in, in the, the night of, you know, the, when you have to fast. Uh, in the nights of the fasting 
Okay, Rafasu to have intimate relationships with your women. What happened is some of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi there are two stories here that I want to, uh, or I'll mention very quickly. Some of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi assumed that on the, when you're fasting, at, even at, after you break your fast, you can't have a relationship with your wife. So this is what Allah is referring to here. أُحِلَّ لَكُمْ لَيْلَةُ الصِّيَامِ رَفَثُوا إِلَى نِسَائِكُمْ هُنَّ لِبَاسٌ لَكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لِبَاسٌ لَهُنَّ They are covering for you, you are covering for them. Right, you know, you are covering for each other. So this is the similitude Allah gives. You know, the clothes are used to uh, to adorn someone, to make someone look beautiful, and to cover the faults, and to give warmth, and so on and so forth. All these qualities you are for one another. And, you know, and so especially in this spiritual month of Ramadan, where Allah is saying what? That the companions of the Prophet thought you can't go to your wives, but they did it anyhow, thinking that they can't, but they could. Right? So Allah says, عَلِمَ اللَّهُ أَنَّكُمْ كُنْتُمْ تَخْتَانُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ Now imagine the companions of the Prophet ﷺ when these ayahs were revealed, that they were surprised that Allah knew this about us. You know how they felt, you could have imagined. عَلِمَ اللَّهُ أَنَّكُمْ كُنْتُمْ تَخْتَانُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ Allah knows that you were deceiving yourselves in a sense, right? أَنفُسَكُمْ فَتَابَ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah forgave you. وَعَفَانْكُمْ and he's, he, he, you know, he, he turned towards you and he forgave you. Now go now and have relationships with them. Meaning, especially in the month of Ramadan, have relationships with your wives. Because this is a spiritual month, and having a relationship this month, you know, it will definitely bring its benefits. So what is that? And seek what Allah has written for you. Of what? Of maybe possibly children. What Allah has written for you in terms of your relationship with your wives. That it will improve. وَابْتَغُوا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا كُلُوا وَشْرَبُوا Eat and drink until what? حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنُوا خَيْطُ الْأَبْيَضُ مِنْ خَيْطُ الْأَصْوِدُ Until the white, uh, you can say, line, okay, is clear from the black line in the in the sky, okay? من الفجر at, at the time of the, to make the fajr, okay? ثُمَّ أُطِمُّ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى اللَّيْلِ Then complete the siyam to the night time, okay? Complete till night time. Eat, fast till the night time. Night begins when? Night begins at Maghrib, essentially. Okay? So that's when you have to open up the fast. And do not go, go near your wives. While you are doing itikaf in the masjid. While you're in the masjid. Okay? Tilka hadudullah. This is, the, this is the hadood of Allah. This is the limits of Allah. فَلَا تَقْرَبُوهَا Don't go near them. كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ This is how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes clear آيَاتِهِ لِلنَّاسِ His signs for the people لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ So that they will have taqwa. Now, what is the most basic aspect of taqwa? And that is to have halal food. So this is why this is being mentioned. The other thing that's being mentioned is don't buy, try to bribe the leaders. Dri bribe the judges, bribe people in elections. Don't do that. You know how we give people money and that they'll do our job. Th from this ayah, it seems to be a negative thing. I'm not saying not to do it because of this. The, 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 it's a matter of, of analogy and it's a matter of qiyas. But uh, we have to be careful what we do, right? Don't eat up the wealth between yourselves in battle and falsehood. And don't think that you can like bribe your way to the hukkab, to the leaders, to the judges, to the politicians, all that. Millions and millions of dollars you give to a politician and in the end he backbites you, he backstabs you like happened with George Bush and Muslims in America. And you eat up the wealth of the people with sin. And then you bring this man in, into the stage and then he kills millions of Muslims anyway. So you have to be careful. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, They ask you about the new moon. These are for timings for people in Hajj. And there was this thing that they had in Hajj, this custom that they had during Hajj, that they would come to the houses from the back. Okay? So they, would, they wouldn't come to the houses from the front. So Allah says, This is not virtue. That you come to the houses from the back. Bitter is righteousness is the one who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taqwa of Allah. Enter the house from the door. This 
ayah has so many fatawas, have so many fatawas have been made using this ayah, this understanding that don't enter the house from the back door, enter the house from the front door. And and وَأْتُلْ بِيُوتَ مِنْ أَبْوَابِهَا Enter the house from its doors. وَاتَّقُوا الله Fear Allah لَعَلَّكُمْ تُفْلِحُونَ So that you will perhaps be successful. Now, jihad. Jihad is connected with, you can say, two ibadat. Hajj, because hajj is the jihad of the women. Also, this is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And it is the, you can say, the international or the United Nations of the Muslims. Right? This is where the armies used to be made. This is where the armies used to be dispatched from. This is where the people used to be recruited from. This is where the Khalifa used to speak to the Muslims from. So there's obviously a connection. And then fasting is the spiritual month, right? That gets us ready. And in fact, Sayyam is the term, Sayyam is taken from the getting the horses ready for war. Okay, this is what it was. And that is when they used to make the horses face the harsh winds and keep them from eating so that when they go into the battle, you know, the, the horse would be able to take that. So that was called siyat. So that's where that word comes from. Anyway, now you can compare the Quranic view of war and when you are already in battle, because if you're in, you, somebody is fighting against you, what are you going to do? Just stand still? And no, of course, then there, then Quran tells us to, you know, if you're a living nation and you are a, a, a you have life and you have honor and you have self-respect, then you have to stand up and do something, right? Or if, unless you just think that it's best to be dead, right? وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ And fight in the path of Allah. Who? الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ Those who fight you. وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا and don't transgress the limit. In Allah la yuhibbul mu'tadin. Allah doesn't love those people who transgress limits. Fight those who meaning fight back. Fight back to who? Those who fight you. Now the next part all is coming regarding those who are now the battle has begun. So so now that is the discussion. And kill them wherever you find them. And Kick them out from where they kicked you out. Meaning they kicked you out from your houses in Mecca, you kick them out. Right? Anarchy, chaos, corruption in society is worse than murder. Don't fight them inside Mecca. Meaning Masjid al-Haram. Until they fight you. If they fight you there, فَاقْتُلُوهُمْ Then show them that you're a living nation. كَذَلِكَ جَزَاءُ الْكَافِرِينَ This is the reward of those people who reject the truth. فَإِن تَهَوْ But if they stop, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Then Allah is also غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ And that means that you should also stop. فَإِن تَهَوْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ وَقَاتِلُوهُمْ But if they don't, وَقَاتِلُوهُمْ حَتَّى لَا تَكُونَ فِتْنَ Fight them till there's no chaos and anarchy and shirk. وَيَكُونُ الدِّينُ لِلَّهِ And the deen becomes Allah's. This is وَتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا حَدَاكُمْ The deen becomes Allah. فَإِن تَهَوْ But if they stop, if they're not transgressing you, فَلَا أُدْوَانَ إِلَّا عَلَى الظَّالِمِينَ Then there's no transgression. There's no aggression. Except on the wrongdoers. If they do wrong, then yes. Then you have to stand up for yourself. الشَّحْرُ الْحَرَامِ بِالشَّحْرِ الْحَرَامِ وَالْحُرُمَاتُ قِصَاص so, you know, the sacred months, the four months in which you're not allowed to fight, right? So those are those four months you are not allowed. Shahrul haram bi shahrul haram. Okay? Wal hurumatu qisas. And what? Then you uh, take the retribution. You take the retribution. Over here, a very important principle is important. Something is haram because something is haram. Haram means sacred. And haram also means forbidden. That's why we say masjid al haram. Shahrul haram, the month that is haram, Bishahr al haram. Sacred month for a sacred month. Okay? If they attack, meaning if they attack you in a sacred month, you can then attack them in the sacred month. A sacred month for a sacred month. They broke the rights of the sacred month, but I was saying there are five, you can say, things, the five sacred things. One of them is, for example, aql. Har something is haram because something is ha haram. Something is haram, meaning alcohol is haram because something is sacred. Like Masjid Haram is sacred. Haram means forbidden. Haram means sacred. Both. Uh, uh, the um, the body of a the 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 body of a 
female is sacred. So because, because of that, certain things are haram, right? Uh, family relationships are sacred. So other some things are forbidden because of that. Because your aql is sacred, your aql is sacred, so alcohol is forbidden. So like this, okay? So shahrul haram bi shahrul haram. Wal hurumatu qisas. And also there is qisas in that. Qisas in these sacred months, okay? فَمَنِ اعْتَدَى عَلَيْكُمْ فَاعْتَدُوا عَلَيْهِ بِمِثْلِ مَا اعْتَدَى عَلَيْكُمْ If somebody causes you pain of any sort, then you cause equal to that. And this is very important. Even when husbands and wives are fighting, keep your voice at the same level as the other person. If she's yelling at a certain level, don't go over her or don't go over him. Keep it at that. Same. Always keep the minimum, if not less, keep it the same. Don't do more. Because if you do something more, then she'll do something more. And the same thing with nations, the same thing with individuals. fear Allah. And know it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the people that have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now you're you're gonna do qital, you have to fight, but with fight you need money. It's not just going to come by itself. And spend in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't cause yourself to be killed with your own hands. Meaning don't give everything and then regret it later on. And then you have nothing. No, give in the cause of Allah. Give in the cause of Allah. And be good and do good. Inna Allah yuhibbul muhsineen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the muhsineen, those people who do things perfectly. Who worship Allah perfectly, do things perfectly. The Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Inna Allah kataba ala ihsan ala kulli shay. The Prophet, the Prophet, Allah has written, has ordained perfection in everything. That when you will even kill uh, something, right, make sure the sword is sharp. Now this ayah, when you make the intention, then you have to do Hajj or Umrah. Once you start, once you wear the Ihram, now you have to do it. But let's say you're going, okay, and you've been stopped. Then whatever easily you can give of, of, of a, um, of Hadi. Hadi means like uh, the, the meat of the sacrifice, the sacrifice, okay. The cutting of the hair is the sign that you've completed and now you have to go back, right? So don't cut your hair until the hadiya reaches its destination. And whoever of you is sick, okay, or he has some problem with his hair, his head, then he has to give fidya. Min siyamin by fasting, sadaqatin, sadaqa, giving money to the poor, aw nusuk or some uh, sacrifice. Fa idha amantu amintum, when you have become in a secure place, that thing that was stopping you from getting the hajj, that calamity or whatever difficulty has been removed. Fa idha amintum, fa man tamatta'a bil umrati ila al hajji, fa mastaysara min al hadi, then who uh, of the umrah and uh, then. Then, uh, you know the three types of hajj. If you do umrah and hajj together, then you can give whatever is easy for you of the sacrifice, the hadi. And whoever doesn't find something because there's a calamity and you went there and now there's some difficulty. For him, is fasting three days. In the time of Hajj, was sabatin ida rajatum, and seven when you go back home. Tilka ashratun kamila. This is ten days complete. Three during the Hajj time, and then seven when you went back. Thalika liman yam yakun ahlu hadir al Masjid al Haram. This law applies for the one whose family is not in Masjid al Haram. What taqullah? Fear Allah. Wa alamu an Allah shadidu liqab, and know that Allah subhanahu wa taala is very severe in taking punishment. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Hajj ashhurun ma'lumat. Hajj are known months. The same as the Arabs in the time of the Prophet, they, what they understood to be Hajj is Hajj. فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّ Whoever makes fard for himself to do Hajj, فَلَا رَفَسَ وَلَا فَسُوقَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجْ There is no intimacy with your wife. وَلَا فَسُوقَ 
and nor you know uh, doing anything wrong, anything evil. Wala jidala fil hajj, and no arguing. Nowadays, you go for hajj, hajj and umrah. You all know that we we behave like animals there. Sometimes we're behaving like animals, and and nowadays even thieves come there, and so many wrong things happen there. This first, you have to remove the harm. La, uh, like the Prophet ﷺ said, لا ضرر ولا ضرر, no causing harm. لا ف ولا فلا رفسا ولا فسوكا ولا جدال في الحج. وما تفعل من خير then do the good. First remove the harm, then do it. وما تفعل من خير من خير يعلمه الله. Allah سبحانه وتعالى knows it. فت وتزودوا and take provisions. فإن خير زاد التقوى. The best provision is تقوى of Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Take provisions. Don't be going there without money and you did, You actually didn't have the ability and you went there without provisions and then you're begging people there, you're in Hajj and you're already begging people. So the, so have the proper precautions, the proper preparations. And the best preparation is to have taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاتَّقُونِي And fear me. Have taqwa of Allah. يَا أُلُوا الْأَلْبَابِ People of understanding. Oh, people of understanding. لَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاهٌ أَن تَبْتَغُوا فَضْلًا مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ There is nothing wrong with you seeking the fadl of Allah. Meaning you can, when you're going to hajj, you can take something with you for what? You can take something with you to sell. You know, you have some merchandise you want to sell and show it to the people. If they want it, they buy it. If not, then you just, you know, bring it back home. لَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاهٌ أَن تَبْتَغُوا فَضْلًا مِّنْ رَبِّكُمْ There's nothing wrong with you seeking the fadl of Allah. فَإِذَا أَفَدْتُمْ مِنْ عَرَفَاتٍ and when you have come out of Arafa, فَذْكُرُوا in the in the مَشْعَلِ al haram When you're in Muzdalfa, then remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that مَشْعَلِ al haram is part of that. When you come out from Arafa, when you and you go towards Muzdalfa, then remember Allah uh, مِنْ عَرَفَاتٍ فَذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ in the مَشْعَلِ al haram وَذْكُرُوهُ كَمَا هَذَاكُمْ Remember him like he, like he has. وَذْكُرُوهُ كَمَا هَذَاكُمْ Remember him like he's taught you to remember him. In kuntum min qablihi la min al Because before this you were certainly astray. Certain aspects of Hajj, uh, the Prophet accepted as the the people of Quraysh were doing it. And other parts, uh, the Quran didn't agree with it and changed it. One of them is this, thumma afidu min haythu afad nas You know, the people of Quraysh, they would stay in Mina instead of going to Arafah and then from Arafah to Muzdalfa. So, ثُمَّ أَفِيدُ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَفَادَ النَّاسِ Then Allah says here, no, no, no. Then everyone leave from where everyone was leaving, which is Arafah. ثُمَّ أَفِيدُ مِنْ Sorry, مُذَّلْفَة. ثُمَّ أَفِيدُ مِنْ حَيْثُ أَفَادَ النَّاسِ وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهِ And seek Allah's forgiveness. إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Indeed, Allah is غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ وَإِذَا قَدَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ And when you have done all your rights, as you used to, you used to do this and wail and cry about your forefathers. No, but show the love for Allah. Or even more than that. And what should your dua be? Dua should not just be always for dunya and dunya and dunya. No, that's not right. This is very wrong. And there are those people who, amongst people, they say, Allah give us of dunya, give us of dunya. وَمَا لَهُمْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنْ خَلَاقٍ Then they have no portion in the hereafter. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ And amongst them there are those who say, رَبَّنَا O our Lord, آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنًا Give us the good of this world. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنًا And give us the good in the hereafter. وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ And save us from the hellfire. Twice for the hell hereafter, the most important thing, save us from the hellfire. And give us good in the hereafter. So twice for the hereafter and one for dunya. Okay. So at minimum, your your ratio proportion should be according to that. Rabbana atina fi dunya, one time for dunya, two times for akhirah. If you really want the akhirah, if you really want Allah, that's how it should be. Ulaika alayhim nasibu mimma kasabu. For these people, they will get a share of what they have earned in Allah Sari. Wallahu Sari ul Hisab, meaning the good that the good deeds that they have done and the, the acceptance of the dua. And, and so and so forth. Wallahu sariu al hisab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very fast in taking an account. Wadkurullaha fi ayyamin ma'adudat. So remember Allah in the few days. Now, if you're there in Hajj and then you ran out of money and you can go back earlier in two days. Okay? 
You can go back if there was some class. Things happen and you have to go back early. It's okay. It's not a problem. If you have to go, if somebody goes back after two days, it's okay. And if he stays for the uh, longer, if he stays more than two days, for the person who has taqwa of Allah. وَاتَّقُوا الله, fear Allah, وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْهِ تُحْشَرُونَ Know it that you have to be gathered in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, some people, you know, they would go to the Prophet sallam and they would present themselves in such a uh, fantastic way that they would be very, they would look very uh, delightful. But they were in fact enemies of Islam. So, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُعْجِبَكَ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا فِي قَلْبِ وَهُوْ أَلَدُّ الْخِصَامِ And amongst people are those people that when, you know, يُعْجِبُكَ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ They're what they're saying. يُعْجِبُكَ قَوْلُهُ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا they're, they're such delightful what they say about to you in this world. وَيُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا قَلْبِ And Allah swears about what is in their hearts. هُوَ أَلَدُّ الْخِصَامِ He's the worst of your enemy. He's the most argumentative person. إِذَا تَوَلَّا سَعَى فِي الْأَرْضِ when he turns away from you, he struggles in earth. فِيهَا He struggles to cause chaos and corruption. وَيُحْلِكَ الْحَرْسِ And he destroys the harvest. وَالنَّصْرِ And he destroys the um, the animals. وَاللَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْفَسَادِ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like the fasad, doesn't like the corruption. And then when somebody sits with him and says, Look, you know, you should fear Allah, you shouldn't do this. وَإِذَا قِيلَ لَهُ اتَّقِ اللَّهَ أَخَذَتْ عِزَّتُهُ بِالْإِثَمِ then he takes his self-respect and puts sin over over his self-respect because he gets angry. That Why did you say this to me? Who are you to say this to me? فَحَسْبُهُ جَهَنَّمْ The hellfire is enough for him. وَبِعْسَ الْمِهَادِ And what an evil returning place it is. وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَلِي نَفْسَهُ بِتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ And then there are those people. This is one person. He has a fake a veneer of being virtue. And here is, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَشْتَرِي نَفْسَهُ اِبْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ Then there are those people who have purchased their selves, they purchased their selves for the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَاللَّهُ رَعُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ And Allah is رَعُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ There are a specific occasions or uh, pe for people for whom these ayat are revealed, but it actually fits generally for anyone. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those people, مَنْ يَشْتَرِي نَفْسَهُ اِبْتِغَاءَ مَرْضَاتِ اللَّهِ Those people who've sold themselves, who, you know, those people who have uh, sold themselves for the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَا يُحْلَذِينَ آمَنُوا Now over there, if you remember, in yesterday, in just one, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when we were talking about Bani Israel, Allah said, أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ Do you believe in part of the book and reject the other part? فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ يَفْعَلُوا ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا خِزْيٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا What will be the reward of those people who take this attitude? إِلَّا خِزْيٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا You're humiliated in this world? The, now the con contrast of that is this in the positive sense. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Now this is being talked to us. What? Don't believe in part of the book and reject the other. What is يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أُدْخُلُوا فِي السِّلْمِ كَافَ Oh you people who believe enter into Islam completely and fully. اللَّهُمَّ جَعَلْنَا مِنْهُمْ وَلَا تَطَّبِعُوا خُطُوَاتِ الشَّيْطَانِ And shaitan, don't make him step by step make you digress from this. This should be your goal. This should be your intent. إِنَّ الصَّلَاةِ وَنُسُقِ وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ إِنَّهُ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌ مُبِينَ Indeed, shaitan is your clear enemy. فَإِنْ زَلَلْتُمْ But if you slip, you know, مِنْ بَعْدِ جَاءَتْكُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ فَأَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ If you, you know, you, if, after clear, if you deviate, if you slip, if you go the wrong direction, مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَتْكُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ After the clear signs have come to you, the teachings have come to you, now you can't wake up someone who's already awake, right? You can wake up somebody who's sleeping who doesn't know, but somebody who knows is already awake. جَاءَتْكُمُ الْبَيِّنَاتِ فَعَلَمُوا Then know it. إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Allah is the one with the power and He is the one with wisdom. Okay? In, in His wisdom, He's letting you go in the wrong direction. هَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ Are you just waiting? What are you waiting for? This is the attitude in this ayah. هَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمُ اللَّهُ فِي ذُلُّ مِنَ الْغَمَامِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَقُضِيَ الْعَمَرِ Are you waiting for Allah to come with the angels and the clouds? Meaning, this is uh, an, uh, an illusion given to, what are you waiting for? You want Allah to come? If Allah comes, it'll all be done. You're done for then. Allah is giving you time before the end. 
wa ilallahi turja'ul umur and all affairs have to in the end return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sal bani israila kam atainahum min ayatin bayyina ask bani israil how many clear signs we gave them wa may yatabaddal ni'mat Allah min ba'di ma ja'at after whoever changes the ni'mah and the biggest ni'mah of Allah is guidance it's the guidance of Allah the knowledge of Allah the bayyina the alhuda the quran the sunnah this is the biggest ni'mah without this wealth is what what uses wealth if there's no iman what wealth is what uses health if there's no iman right so iman is the biggest ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in fact it is the only real ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that sense wa man yubaddil ni'mat Allah min ba'di ma ja'at ja'athu fa inna Allah shadidun niqab Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very severe in then taking uh, a giving punishment zuyyina alladhina kafaru al hayatu ad dunya wa yaskharuna min alladhina amanu zuyyina it is made zina is this beauty that's fake glitter lilladhina kafaru al hayatu ad dunya those people who reject the truth this world has become like a zina for them wa yaskharuna and they make fun alladhina amanu wa alladhina taqaw fawqahum yawm al qiyamah but those people who fear allah is the day of judgment is on top of their heads it's always on their minds wallahu yarzuqu man yasha'u bi ghairi hisab and allah gives to whoever he wills bi ghairi hisab without any without any limits a blank check now this ayah is very important this ayah is about how all mankind was one and allah sent his messengers it's not in allah's plan that all humanity be one this is not allah's plan allah's plan is let human beings choose and the haq and the batil they have to clash kan an-nas ummatan wahidan mankind was all one ummah فبعث الله النبيين مبشرين منذرين الله سبحانه وتعالى then sent prophets as they gave glad tidings and they warned the people وانزل معهم الكتاب بالحق and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also sent a book with them in truth why ليحكم الناس في مختلفوا في so that that book would judge between the differences that they had some people wanted to go with what Allah wanted and others didn't want to go with what Allah wanted they wanted their self interest they wanted their ego they wanted their wealth and their fame and the status quo and so on and so forth wa makhtalafa fihi illa illa alladhina utuhu min ba'di ma ja'athum al bayyinat they didn't differ in the real sense of differing until the bayyinat came to them okay and then until the clear signs came to them baghiyam baynahum out of the urge to dominate fa hada allah alladhina amanu li makhtalafu fi allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided the believers in regarding the difference of opinions they said look whatever allah decides even if it goes against us we're going to go with whatever allah decides then there were those who said no 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 matter what it's our self interest it's just whatever i want for my interest i don't want to lose my money i don't want to lose my status i don't want to lose whatever fahada allah fahada allah alladhina amanu lima khtalafu fi min al haqq bi idni by his permission then he guided the believers in those difference of opinion in the issues that they were differing in he guided them in the right way wallahu yahdi man yasha ila sirat al mustaqim allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides to whoever he wants to sirat al mustaqim whoever desires to man yasha whoever wants and the other man yasha is if whoever allah wants and man yasha is the person who is wanting the guidance both ways it goes am hasibtum an tadkhulul jannata wa lam ya'tikum mathal alladhina khalaw min qablikum do you think you'll enter jannah remember over there it came ولا نبلغنكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين over there in the beginning of the second juz over here now this أم حسبتم أن تدخلوا الجنة do you think you'll enter Jannah like just like that ولما يأتيكم مثل الذين خلوا من قبلكم you still haven't had the tests like the people before you مسّتهم البعصا والضراء وزلزلوا they were touched with adversity and difficulty was zunzilu and they were shaken hatta until yaqul yaqul rasul wal ladina amanu the prophet himself and those that were with him they said mata nasrullah where is the help of allah then allah said ala inna nasrullah qareeb the help of allah is near yasalunaka madha yunfiqun qul ma anfaqtum min khairin fa lil walidayni wal aqrabina wal yatama wal masakina wa ibn as-sabil وَمَا تَفْعَلُ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ This part has a lot to do with spending and spending and spending and mu'amalat and ibadat. In fact, uh, I was going to show you this over here. This uh, is like a rope. You know, like if a rope has threads, right? And has threads coming out of it. A rope has threads coming out of it. And uh, if from ayah number 
uh, uh, actually not 2.16, uh, but, uh, but from after Ayatul Bir, after the, uh, after the Ayatul Bir, after the Ramadan, from there, there are four themes running. Number one, fighting for the truth, spending the money for the truth, worship issues and social issues. You'll see this come up over and over. So it'll go from one to the other. And these are all interconnected like a rope that has, you know, when you see the rope, if they're interconnected, you see one uh, strand come out and then the next strand come out and the next strand come out. So like this, but they're all interconnected internally also. But that would then make this stuff seem very, very long. So uh, after jihad, we talked about hajj, then the warning to the hypocrites that we just read, right? Those people who talk like so smoothly with a smooth tongue, and but they're your worst enemies, right? And they go out causing, and then, uh, then the rejection, those people who reject the signs of Allah, and then again the struggle of Allah uh, in the cause of Allah will come. You'll see this, okay? Well, يُنْفِقُونَ O Prophet ﷺ, they ask you, what should we spend? قُلْ مَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ Whatever you spend of good. فَلِلْوَالِدَيْنِ وَلَقْرَبِينَ وَالْيَتَامَ is for the parents and the near ones, the relatives. وَالْيَتَامَ and for the orphans. وَالْمَسَاكِينَ and for the masakin, the people that are helpless. وَابْنِ السَّبِيلِ and those that are lost in their traveling ways. وَمَا تَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ whatever you do of good good things. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa taala is is all aware of that. He knows what you're doing. كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْقِتَالِ fighting has been ordained for you. So this is now the subject here. وَهُوَ كُرْهٌ لَكُمْ And it, you don't like it, you dislike it. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ It may be, and this is a general principle that applies to many different issues, even our marital issues, so many issues, right? عَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ Maybe you dislike something but it's good for you. وَعَسَىٰ أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ And maybe you love something but it's actually bad for you. وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah knows but you don't know actually. Allah knows what He's doing for you. You don't know. Okay? يَسْأَلُونَكْ عَنِ الشَّحْرِ الْحَرَامِ كِتَالٍ فِيهِ Now, there was an incident that took place in the time of the Prophet ﷺ where one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ, Abdullah bin Jahash, ended up killing. Now, remember, this is pre-Badr. And this is actually the incident here that led to Badr. So, he ended up killing one of the Quraysh. Okay? So, now they made a big propaganda. Oh, now Muhammad is in Medina and now he's, you know, even like harassing us and killing our 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 Qurayshi people and you know so on and so forth. fihi kabir. Yes, killing, and this happened in a sacred month also. So two things: one, a Qurayshi was killed, and number two, Abdullah bin Jahsh radiAllahu anhu killed a Qurayshi, and number two, uh, uh, it was a sacred month. Ulkitalun fihi kabir. Yes, aluna ka anis shahr al haram. They ask you of the sacred month kitalun fi about killing in it. Ulkitalun fihi kabir. Yes, we still agree with the sacred months. We're not in disagreeing, meaning we Islam wants to keep the sacred months. Kitalun fihi kabir. It's a very big sin. It's kabir. It's kabair. Wasadu an sabilillah. But what what have you done? Wasadu an sabilillah. You have turned people from the path of Allah. Wa kufrun bi, and your idol worship is the kufr that you're doing. Wal masjid al haram wa ikhraju ahlihi akbaru in Allah. You're kicking the people out from the sacred place of Makkah. This is bigger in front of Allah subhanahu wa taala. And so Allah subhanahu wa taala talked positively. Even Allah, Allah subhanahu wa taala said yes, it's kabir. But then Allah subhanahu wa taala went to the root cause. Why did all of this sequence of events happen when? The media comes to us, we become defensive. We don't go to the root cause. What is really happening in the world? Why are Muslims suffering? And what is causing Muslims to react to, to and how Muslims are reacting to this suffering? We're not talking about the real issues. We just become defensive. Islam is peace. Islam is peace. Islam is peace. Like a dead nation that can't stand up for itself. Pul kitalun fihi kabir. Kital, yes, killing in this month is big, big sin. وَصَدُّوَانْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَكُفْرٌ بِي وَالْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَإِخْرَاجُ أَهْلِهِ مِنْهُ أَكْبَرُ إِنْدَ اللَّهِ But kicking, uh, doing kufr, and stopping the path of Allah, and uh, keep, kick, kicking people out of Mecca, and keeping them from praying in Masjid al-Haram in Mecca, is bigger in front of Allah. الْفِتْنَةُ أَكْبَرُ مِنَ الْقَتْلِ This is another universal principle. Anarchy, people causing anarchy, manufacturing fake conflicts, manufacturing wars, right? Uh, that is worse than killing. You're talking about this person killed or that person killed where you've corrupted the whole society? 
wala yazaluna yuqatilunakum they will never stop fighting you hatta yurudukum an dinikum in istata'u in istata' in istata'u they will never stop fighting you in to return you back from your deen in istata'u if they could wa man yartad minkum an dinihi whoever turns back on his deen right fa yamut wa huwa kafir and he dies if you go back even after this pressure if you go back and leave the deen of islam then you're kafir فَأُولَٰئِكَ حَبِذَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Their good deeds are gone to waste in this life and the next life. أُولَٰئِكَ أَصْحَبُ النَّرْهُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ In it they will remain. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَالَّذِينَ هَاجَرُوا وَجَاهَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أُولَٰئِكَ يَرْجُونَ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ Indeed those people who believe and then they did hijrah, then they fought in the struggle of the cause of Allah. أُولَٰئِكَ يَرْجُونَ رَحْمَةَ اللَّهِ These are the people that really want the rahmah of Allah. وَاللَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ And Allah is غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ Right? They're not two-sided. They know the side that they're on and they're willing to do anything for the side that they're on. Over here is very interesting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now brings a social issue. Again, you see. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ O Prophet ﷺ, they ask you of alcohol and gambling. قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ in these things is big sin. الناس, there's some benefits, you know, studies showing that there's some benefits with alcohol and so on and so forth. Even though I should show you the latest research shows that uh, the new study shows any amount of drinking is bad for you. Here's what the experts say. So this is Time magazine, by the way. Okay. And so the new research shows this. But anyway, uh, there was research before that that said there's some benefit in alcohol. So over here, the law is if there's some benefit, but if the evil is bitter, be bigger than the benefit, then the benefit doesn't matter. Okay? And this is what Allah is saying. In it is a great sin. The sin is great. There's some benefit for mankind at many different levels. But the evil of it is much bigger than the benefit of it. And they ask you, O oh Prophet, what should we spend? Whatever is surplus, give it away. Whatever is surplus, give it away. Because, why? If the deen of Allah is not supreme, then you have to struggle to make the deen of Allah supreme. And in, if the deen of Allah needs your help, if Islam needs your help, then you, we, I, and I think anybody honest would say, we don't have rights to just plan and plan for dunya. Yes, it's halal money, but you can't just plan and plan for dunya. And the Islam needs your help. You have to spend money. Give everything for the cause of Allah. This is how Allah makes clear to you His signs so that you will perhaps ponder. You will think. In this world and the next world. That's connecting to the ayah before. Okay. وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْيَتَامَ They ask you about the yatama. Over The ayah had already been revealed previously. Uh, uh, don't go near the... وَلَا تَقْرَبُ الْمَالِ الْيَتَامَ Don't go near the wealth of the yatim, the orphan. Don't go near it, the ayah before. That made it a little bit difficult, so now here a new ayah comes to make it clear what was meant by that. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْيَتَامَ They ask you about the orphans. قُلْ إِسْلَاهٌ لَهُمْ خَيْرٌ Having good for them, islah for them, having a, a correction for them, doing good to them is good. If you mix your wealth with their wealth, you know, because it was the ayah that said that don't go near their wealth, that was for that time just to give the basic teaching. But if you now have good intentions and you want to take care of them, they're your brothers, you can mix your wealth. And Wallahu ya'lamu mufsida min al musli, Allah knows which is the facade person. The person causing corruption and has mischief and, and bad intent and the person who has good intent. If Allah wanted, He would have made it difficult for you. In Allah Azizun Hakim. Indeed, Allah is all powerful and all wise. Over here now the issues of marriage start. Now these this is very important. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, hatta yu'min. Do not marry the idol-worshipping women until they believe. And the believing, uh, the believing woman that is a slave, خَيْرٌ مِنْ مُشْرِكَةٍ is better than the idol-worshipper. لَوْ أَعْجَبَتْكُمْ even if she looks delightful to you. وَلَا تُنْكِهُ الْمُشْرِكِينَ حَتَّى يُؤْمِنُوا And now it's to the women. Don't 
tie, don't marry a person that does shirk, that worships idols, is a pagan worshiper, until they believe. Wala abdum mu'minun, a man servant that is a believer, khayru min mushrikin, is, is better than an idol worshiper or a pagan, lo a'ajabakum, even if he looks delightful to you. Wala'ika yad'una ila nar, these are all, these things, these, this, uh, this feeling of delight, this feeling, a'ajabakum, this feeling or that person, book. Ula'ika yad'una ila nar, they are calling you to the hellfire. Wallahu yad'u ila jannati wal maghfirati bi izni. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling you to Jannah and his maghfirah by his permission. Wa yubayinu ayati la alakum yatadakkarun. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing you his ayat so, and so that you would be able to ponder it. Now, uh, let's continue inshallah. Wa yas'aluna ka anil mahid. And they ask you about the menstruation, O Prophet Wasallam. It's a time of, you know, with women, menstruation is, for some women, it doesn't even matter. It's like, it's just normal. And some women, they can't get out of their bed. So you have a whole range and a spectrum. So, but in general, there's some difficulty, some discomfort, that some uh, anguish that happens because of this. It's like a pain. Then you do i'tazal, you leave the women in the time of their period. Don't go near them until they've purified themselves. When they have purified themselves, then definitely go to them from where Allah has commanded you. Don't go in the way uh, the people of Lut, uh, they went to with women. Inna Allah yuhibbul yuhibbul tawabin wa yuhibbul mutatahirin. Allah subhanahu wa taala loves the people who are tawabin, repent to Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa taala loves the purifiers, the people that purify themselves. Allahumma jalla minhum, Allahumma jalla min tawabin wa min mutahirin. Amin. Allahumma amin. Then Allah subhanahu wa taala says, Nisaukum harthul lakum fatu harthakum al nashiyatum. Look, women are your field. Okay. Uh, they're like your field go to them however you want okay and, and put forward something for yourself in this field like put seeds and you know seeds of love or seeds of children whatever you want to do Allah, fear Allah and remember you're going to meet Allah and you have to answer Allah what you did with this field this heart this, uh, this beautiful land that Allah gave you that you could grow so many different things on Right? So many harvests you can have. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّكُمْ مُلَاقُوا وَبَشِّرِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And give good tidings to the believers. Now here is the issue of وَلَا تَجْعَلُوا اللَّهَ أَرْضَةً لِأَيْمَانِكُمْ Don't make Allah an excuse for your, for your swearings. أَن تَبَرُّوا وَتَتَّقُوا وَتُصْلِهُ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ You know, somebody says, I swear by Allah, I'm not going to help him. But it was a good, good thing to help him. You know, uh, for example, how Abu Bakr radiallahu an, he had sworn that he wouldn't help the, uh, the, uh, one of the people that, uh, one of the famous companions of the Prophet, I forget his name, who had, had, had was, uh, Abu Bakr was helping him, but when he heard that he said something against his daughter, when the whole issue of the necklace and all the surrounding issues, um, happened, he said, I swear I won't give. So Allah says, don't make your swearing to Allah as an excuse to keep your, yourself from doing good, right? وَلَا تَجْعَلُوا اللَّهَ أَرْضَةً لِأَيْمَانِكُمْ أَن تَبَرُّوا وَتَتَّقُوا وَتُصْلِهُ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ That you do islah with people, all mankind. Christians, you do something good, that's fine. As long as they're not fighting you, they're not opposing you, they're leaving you alone, fine, no problem. وَاللَّهُ سَمِيُّنْ عَلِيمٌ Now because the issue of oaths has come, this is similar to the issue of divorce. So now you'll see. وَلَا يُؤَاخِذُكُمُ اللَّهُ بِلَغْوِ أَيْمَانِكُمْ وَلَكِنْ يُؤَاخِذُكُمْ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ Allah is not going to take you into account because of your, uh, because of what you said in vain talk. Like, I swear by Allah this or that. That's just your habit. Especially the Arabs, it was their habit. وَلَكِنْ يُؤَاخِذُكُمْ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ قُلُوبُكُمْ But Allah will take you to account because of what is in your heart. What were your real intentions? Right? Are you making? Are you saying this? Oh no! I swore I'm, I. I can't help him now. I said I'm. You're just making these excuses, right? Allah knows what's. You have to. You. It's not just about what you said. Allah is looking at your heart too. Wallahu ghafurun halim. Allah is ghafur. He's forgiving and halim for. For he's very. For, uh, for, he has forbearance. Okay. Now the issue of talaq comes. 
Very, very interesting. And over here again, there's a lot of research that can be done. لِلَّذِينَ يُؤْلُونَ مِن نِسَاءٍ مِن نِسَاءِهِمْ And those people who swear, okay, uh, not to have relationships with their wives. تَرَبَّسُ أَرْبَعَةِ أَشْهُرُ Okay, then they have a waiting period, the, the, the wives, okay, they have a waiting period of four months. فَإِن فَاءُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورُ رَحِيمُ And if they return, meaning uh, the uh, if the relationship turns back to normal and the husband does rujoo, he takes his wife back, then in Allah ghafur rahim. Okay. But in azamut talak, but if you have decided for sure you're going to do talak, but in Allah samiun alim, then Allah is all knowing, all all hearing and all knowing. What happens in talak is a lot, a lot of the worst aspects of our character comes out during the issues of divorce. Two people used to love each other. Now, because of whatever reason, they're getting a divorce. So the worst aspect of the characters and the their biggest uh, the, the 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 venom and the evilness that comes out it happens. So now Allah subhanahu wa taala is warning us from that. فَإِنْ أَزَمُ الطَّلَاقِ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ سَمِيُّنَ عَلِيمٌ Allah subhanahu wa taala knows and He hears. Okay. الطَّلَاقُ مَرَّةَ وَالْمُطَلَّقَاتُ يَتَرَبَّسْنَ بِأَنْفُسِهِنَّ ثَلَاثَ تَكُرُو Now, when the talaq is given. She will stay. Now, here's the thing. If, if, she, so, uh, the person, the, the, when she's been given the talaq, she will keep to herself for three cycles. Okay? And, in, and she cannot hide if there is something in her womb. Okay, ما خلق الله في أرحامهن whatever Allah created in her womb, she can't hide it. إن كنا يؤمن بالله واليوم الآخر if she believes in Allah in the day of judgment وبعولتهن أحق بردهن and the husband has a right to take her back two times he can take her back. Now if the three months period crosses, even if it's the first time or the second time, then the nikah has to be done again. Okay, but if before the three months passes, he takes her back first time, he takes her back the second time. Now third time, that's it. Then the talaq is done. Okay. If they want to make things between themselves, the husband has the right to take her back. What, now over here, let me explain this. You know, people say, how come the man can give the divorce and the woman can't give the divorce? It's like this. If I have a boss, I can't fire my boss. It should be very clear that in Islam, family is really an institute. It's treated as an institute. It is, it is represented as an institute. The, the Allah chose between the husband and the man, man and woman. One of them had to be the leader of the household. Allah chose the man. It could have been the woman, but Allah chose the man. Now, he has one daraja more than her. And what is that? He can give her talaq. This is going to also come up. But if, if you have a problem with your boss, then what can you do? Then all you can do is not attack your boss. You have to go to your boss's boss. You have to go to the judge or to the imam or to somebody on top of your husband who can then enforce the law on him. This is how it is. Because family, there's no institutes in the world, no institute in the world that has two leaders. Why should there be for family? This is exactly the recipe that has been made by the sexual revolution to break up the families and this is why the families are broken up. Because if you enter into a marriage thinking, okay, we're both going to be equal. And you know, psychologically it can have many different dynamics. Only the husband is has the upper hand for sure, only in legal sense, in the sense of he can give talaq. Right? But maybe the woman's personality is stronger. Maybe the woman has more money. Maybe she has more knowledge. She has other advantages, right? So and maybe the husband is passive and she's the more aggressive in the relationship. All these things. But as an institute, as an institute, right? The right to give talaq, that one daraja is given to the husband. He has the right to give her the divorce. If she wants out of the marriage, she has to go to her boss's boss, meaning her husband's boss, which in the case, this case could be a qadi, a judge, a, a imam, or anyone like this. But this recipe that has been created by the sexual revolution in, in this, you know, post-industrial uh, post age, that we're equal, 
Well, if you're equal, then two people equal will always be fighting when it comes to, you know, likes and dislikes and values and which direction to go to and so on and so forth. And this, you find ourselves in the predicament that we're in. A woman should enter into the institute of marriage knowing that she's going to have to sacrifice herself at some point. But if the husband is serious and is really loving, and this is why it's important to have a loving relationship in the marriage. So it's not just about the authority of the husband, because then it just becomes a, you know, the Prophet said, uh, the best of you are those who are good to your families. Anyway, we all know this. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Their husband has the right to take her back twice. If they both want to make things right. Now this has two meanings. They have the same rights as the husband has. This is one interpretation. The other is they have rights according to their responsibilities. They have upon themselves based upon their uh, responsibility, they have their rights. Okay. But the men have a daraja more. Right? What is that? That he can give the talaq. Okay. Uh, and for the man, he has over her daraja. Wallahu azizun hakim. And Allah is Almighty, all wise. You can give divorce to twice. فَإِمْسَاكُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ You either let her, you either, you keep, إِمْسَاكُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ Either you keep her in goodness, right? You don't take her back to hurt her. You keep her in goodness. أَوْ تَصْرِيهُمْ بِالْإِحْسَنِ Or let her go in goodness. وَلَا يُحِلُّ لَكُمْ أَن تَعْخُذُوا مِمَّا آتَيْتُمُوهُنَّ شَيْئًا You are not allowed to take anything that you've given them, anything. And it's very important that you know, the wives make sure that because of the Islamic laws that they way they are, they're regularly getting something. So that when if there is a divorce, then they have something. They have a house and so on and so forth. Uh, Except in the case where, you know, you've seen now the relationship is getting so tight that you can't keep the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're behaving in a bad way. You're going to be behaving badly and negatively. So then one side or the other side has to give something up. Okay. So she, the situation is so bad that now she can do, she can, uh, she can give fidya. She gives some of her mahar, some of her wealth. Okay, you take this back, you take X amount back because now he's getting so or she's getting so harsh that because he's given her so many things, he wants them back or he's, he's acting un Islamic. So now he's not letting her go and he's just keeping her because he knows if he gives her divorce, then you know she's going to have all these, this wealth. So then now she can give some things back to get that divorce. Okay, so. Or the other way is she can go to the Qadi and then it'll be all decided. Either they can decide themselves and she can negotiate with her husband or they can decide with the judge. It still happens the same way here today. This is the limits of Allah. Don't cross them. وَمَنْ يَتَعَدَّ حَدُودُ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Whoever crosses the limits of Allah, they are the wrongdoers. He can take her back twice. He shouldn't take her back to hurt her or harm her or to uh, take revenge on her or just because he doesn't want to now uh, have his what he considered his wealth. He's given to his wife and now she will go and she will be independent of him. He doesn't want that. So just to keep her hurting, he's just keeping her. فَإِنْ طَلَّقَهَا This is the third time now. The third. Now, uh, now she's not halal for him. After that. Until she marries another person. If now that new person, that other person, the person now she will marry, the second husband, if he divorces her, then 
Maybe now she can go back to her first husband if she thinks she can keep the limits of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتِلْكَ حَدُودُ اللَّهِ يُبَيُّنُهَا لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies this for a people that so that they will then know. It doesn't, the literal translation is so that they, for a people that know, but it doesn't mean يُبَيِّنُهَا لِقَوْمِ يَعْلَمُونَ So that they will know is the better translation. وَإِذَا تَلَقْتُمُ النِّسَاءَ And when you have given the divorce فَبَلَغْنَ أَجَلَهُنَّ And they have reached their time period okay? فَأَمْسِكُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ أَوْ صَرِّهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ You either keep them in goodness okay? أَمْسِكُهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ أَوْ صَرِّهُنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَا تَمْسِكُهُنَّ ذِرَارًا لِتَعْتَدُوا Don't keep them with you so you only hurt them وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكَ فَقَدْ ظَلَمَ نَفْسَهُ Whoever does that, he does this to only hurt himself. وَلَا تَتَّخِذُ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ هُزُوَا To keep her just to hurt her is like making fun of the ayat of Allah. You're just playing with the laws of Allah. You've let go the spirit, you're just playing with the laws of Allah. It's like the people of the Sabbath, right? The people of Sabt. They would put the nets there to catch the fish and they're, oh, well, we're not working, you know, the nets are there and they're doing the work. So you're playing with the laws of Allah. وَلَا تَتَّخِذُ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ هُزُوَا Don't take the ayat of Allah, this, the signs of Allah as a joke. وَذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَمَا أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ And whatever has been sent down in the book and wisdom, in the book of Allah and in, in, in hikmah, يُعَذُّكُمْ بِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is warning you with this, right? وَمَا أَنزَلَ, أنزل عَلَيْكُمْ مِنَ الْكِتَابِ وَالْحِكْمَةِ يَعِذُكُمْ بِهِ وَاتَّكُوا اللَّهِ Fear Allah. وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ بِكُلِّ شَيْنْ عَلِيمٌ And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the knowledge of all things. He knows what you're up to. He knows what you're really up to. وَإِذَا طَلَقْتُمُ النِّسَاءِ فَبَلَغْنَ أَجَلَهُنَّ فَلَا تَعْدُلُوهُنَّ أَن تَنْكِهَا Okay, so what happens is the wife, uh, she married a new person. She got divorced. Now she wants to go to the first husband. Don't hold her back from marrying her first husband. وَإِذَا تَلَقْتُمُ النِّسَاءَ فَبَلَغْنَ أَجَلَهُنَّ فَلَا تَعْدُلُوهُنَّ أَن تَنْكِحْ أَزْوَاجَهُنَّ إِذَا تَرَادَوْ بَيْنَكُمْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ As long as you two agree, بِالْمَعْرُوفِ in goodness, there's nothing wrong. Don't stop her from going back to her first husband. ذَلِكَ يُعَذُوا بِهِ This is what you are being given a warning towards. وَمَنْ كَانَ مِنْكُمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Whoever amongst you believes in Allah in the last day, ذَلِكَ أَزْكَى لَكُمْ وَأَثْهَرُ This is more pure and this is more azka, more uh, pu purifying and more pure for you. Okay? وَاللَّهُ uh, يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And Allah knows and you don't know. Now, the issues, what if you have children? What if there's a children to wean all these issues? What about the rizq, uh, the, the maintenance and all child support and all these issues. Now one difference is, I want to share here, very important, is that when a, a, a person, generally when they get divorced, the children go to the mother, the mother's income goes down by 70%. And the husband, because he has to only pay child support, his income goes up by 80%. On the other hand, in Islam, it is what he has to pay all the expenses of the child, basically. He has to pay all the expenses of the child, Okay, uh, now there are certain exceptions to this in Islamic law, which I'm not going to go into, but the, this is the general rule. And the mothers are to give weaning to their mother. The mothers are to wean their children. And this, of course, is a very big thing, a very uh, good thing that mothers should do, which is to wean their children, you know, give milk to their children from their own selves, from their own body. It creates a certain... Uh, deep, deep relationship at a very deep psychological level. Let them give wean their children for two complete years. For the one that has decided to do rida, giving the weaning or the milking of the child. Now the father has to provide for his risk, for the baby's risk, and her, in the clothes of his or her bil maruf, in according to you know the standards that he that are that are right. Okay, 
There's no burden upon a soul except what it can bear. The this usually happens again in court cases. The mother, the father hurts the mother, the mother hurts the father. This shouldn't happen. Okay, then they use the child to do this. So, Okay, the mother is they hurting the mother using the child. ولا مولود له بولدي. And nor the the father should be hurt by uh, because of his child. وعلى الوالث مثل ذلك. And also the same is for the grandparents. وإن أراد فصالا and if they decide أن تراد if they decide to wean the child, milk the give uh, give the child milk. أن تراد بينهما by uh, by agreeing with both each other وتشاور and having شورا with each other. So how do how do they deal with the children afterwards, after the after the divorce by shura? You can have shura with the the father and the mother. They have shura. They're not married, but they can have shura. There's no harm in that. And if you have then, uh, if you you know, if if the husband decides, for example, that the, she should uh, we milk the child, then he has to pay for that. When you have given the full amount, uh, with whatever standard, you can't do this. That you know, later on you say, oh, that other lady is cheaper, and I will go. You can't do that. وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ فِيرَ اللَّهِ وَاعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهِ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Allah is fully aware of Allah is whatever you're doing, Allah sees it fully well. وَالَّذِينَ Now the other thing that's similar to that is when somebody, husband dies. Okay, so what will happen? وَالَّذِينَ يَتَوَفَّوْنَ مِنْكُمْ يَذَرُونَ أَزْوَاجًا يَتَرَبَّسْنَ بِأَنفُسِينَ أَرْبَعَةَ أَشْهُرٍ وَأَشْرَى Now if the wife, if the husband dies, she will... وَالَّذِينَ يَتَوَفَّوْنَ Those that die, men amongst you. وَيَذَرُونَ أَزْوَاجًا And you leave behind your spouses. يَتَرَبَّسْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ They will keep to themselves أَرْبَعَ أَشْحُرْ وَأَشْرَى For four months and ten days. فَإِذَا بَلَغْنَ أَجَلَهُنَّ When they have reached their term. فَلَا جُنَاحَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي مَا فَعَلْنَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ There's no harm upon you men. Meaning the family members, she can do with herself whatever she wants. Bil ma'roof, as long as it is right. Wallahu ya'lamu bi, wallahu, wallahu bima ta'amaluna khabir, and Allah is fully aware of what you do. Wala junaha alaykum fi ma aradtum bihi min khitbat al nisa. Now, you know, Allah says, Allah, now she's a widow, and especially in the Arabs in those days, in the time of the companions, the Prophet, the women, even after uh, the husband has died, they used to get relatively married very pretty quickly. And this is how it should be. Because the Sharia wants to close all the doors of zina and open all the doors of marriage. Make marriage as easy, as accessible, with as least taboos as possible. Right? Even if she's widow, even though her husband just died, recently died, doesn't matter. Make nikah easy, make zina difficult. لا جناع عليكم فيما أردتم به من خطبة النساء. There's no harm upon you if you propose be خطبة النساء. أو أكننتم في أنفسكم. You know you can give like a signal you want to marry her or you can keep it in yourself. علي ما الله أنكم ستذكرونهن. Allah knows fully well that you will be thinking about them. ولكن لا توع because men also not just in the terms of lust but they also think how is she going to take care of herself in this sense. Okay. So maybe they remember her in different ways, right? It doesn't have to be just everything is not sexual, okay? عَلِمَ اللَّهُ أَنَّكُمْ سَتَذْكُرُوهُنَّ وَلَكِنْ لَا تُعَائِدُوهُنَّ سِرًّا Don't promise them anything in secret. إِلَّا أَن تَقُولُوا قَوْلًا مَعْرُوفًا You can say something good, a hint, give them a general hint. I'm also looking to get married too, I'm also looking for a good wife, so on and so forth. You know, something indirect. وَلَا تَعْزِمُ الْأُقْدَةُ النِّكَاهَ هَتَّى يَبْلِغُ الْكِتَابَ أَجَلَ Don't, don't uh, tie the knot, don't do the nikah until the term, a period has been met. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ وَحْفَحْزَرُوهُ Allah knows what's in your, inside yourself. إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَهُولُ الْبَيْنَ الْمَرْعِ وَقَلْبِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows fully well what your heart is thinking. وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ أن الله غفور حليم. الله is غفور and حليم. He's forbearing. He is great, very forbearing. ولا جناع عليكم إن طلقتم النس إن طلقتم النساء ما لم تمسوهن 
There's no harm upon you if you give talaq to the women you have not yet touched or you didn't put a certain mahr. For example, children were small and they were, you know, the parents agreed, right? And the parents agreed and now they're like there. And there's no mahr was technically not set. So then there's some mata' okay, uh, that you will give some utility, some benefit, some gift you can give. A rich person according to his means and then a poor person according to his means. After all, you did have a relationship and, you know, uh, and you had some sort of like, you know, even though you weren't together, you were maybe young, but you grew up knowing each other and so on and so forth. Uh, وَعَلَى الْمَوْسِي قَدَرِهِ وَعَلَى الْمُقْتَرِ قَدَرِهِ مَتَاءٌ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ سَمَّتَاءٌ فِي الْمَعْرُوفِ حَقًا عَلَى الْمُحْسِنِينَ This is the right thing for the muhsinin to do. Okay? That even if there's talaq, try to give some gift to compensate for whatever pain or injury may have been caused. A person should feel bad in a situation like that anyway. وَإِن طَلَّقْتُمُوهُنَّ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَن تَمَسُّوهُنَّ وَقَدْ فَرَضْتُمْ لَهُنَّ فَرِيضًا now over there, in the previous ayah, the thing was <clears throat> that you had not touched the women and there was no mahar set. Right? And then, over there is, give a gift. Now over here is, now if the mahar has been set, set, but you haven't touched them. وَإِن تَلَّقْتُمُهُنَّ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَن تَمَصُّهُنَّ وَقَدْ فَرَضْتُمْ لَهُنَّ فَرِيضًا فَنِفْسُ مَا فَرَضْتُمْ Then there's half of that mahar you have to give. إِلَّا يَعْفُو Except if she forgives, she says, no, 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 I don't want the, you know, mahar. Or the man in whose his hands is the uqdatun nikah, he has the, uh, the knot is in his hands. <coughs> he forgo, he, he, be, he forgoes, meaning he, he says, no, 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 I'm going to give the mahar, okay? He overlooks the fact that he's not going to marry her. And he says, no. This is what Ya'fu means here. That you let it go and you give her the mahar. This is more closer to taqwa. Don't forget for the fadl between you, you. You know, because if she was engaged to you, she was, uh, you know, you had some sort of understanding, some sort of relationship. And so... You know, feelings may be hurt, and so you should do this with the greatest uh, dignity. Okay? Inna Allah bima ta'amaluna basir. Now you see how beautiful teachings the teachings of Islam is. That <clears throat> two people are going to get married and they don't get married. You have to be careful of each other's feelings, even in that situation. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says something very interesting. Now Allah is talking about marriage and divorce, right? And right now, and then now Allah says this, حَافِذُوا عَلَى الصَّلَاةِ وَالصَّلَاةِ الْوُسْطَى Protect your prayers, especially the middle one. Now, most of the Mufassirin say the middle one is also prayer, based upon the sayings of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. وَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ And stand up to Allah in full obedience. <coughs> now, here's very interesting. وَإِنْ خِفْتُمْ رِجَالًا أَوْ رُكْبَانًا Now if you're in jihad and you fear your life, so you have to still pray. On your feet, not walking. On your feet, just standing. أَوْ رُكْبَانًا أَوْ on a uh, horse uh, or camel. فَإِذَا أَمِنْتُمْ When now you're secure, you're in a safe place. فَاذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَبَا عَلَّمَكُمْ Remember, remember Allah how Allah taught, how Allah taught you. How did Allah taught you? The Prophet says, "Sallu kama ra'itu muni." Pray as you see me pray. That's how you're supposed to pray. But this is the exception. Ma lam takunu ta'lamun. What you did not know before. <clears throat> now Allah mentioned salah and praying on the feet or on the animal, and then Allah goes back to this topic. So Allah is reminding us the importance of worshiping Him in order to be able to be civilized in our society. That if you're really standing with obedience to Allah, that will help you in these difficult times where a person's character is being tested. You see, these things that if somebody's just reading it and feels like, oh, why did Allah say this? And now he's going back to this topic and now he's going to another. No, these are all interconnected. 
والذين يتوفون منكم ويذرون أزواج وصية لأزواج أزواجه متاع إلى حول غير إخراج. So those people now that passed away, okay, those that died and they left their spouses, يذرون أزواج وصية and they left a وصية. So they have to now provide for their wives حول متاع إلى حول غير إخراج for one year without being taken out. Now, another the ayat in Sutul Nisa, I'm sorry, I said Ma'ida before too, but it's actually Sutul Nisa, uh, where the laws of inheritance are, okay? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the laws of inheritance, so that now takes care of this issue, okay? So, فَإِنْ خَرَجْنَا فَلَا جُلَاحَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي مَا فَعَلْنَا فِي أَنفُسِهِنَّ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ مِنْ مَعْرُوفِ Now, if they take themselves out, Right, they're going to get their inheritance, and then they will be able to do whatever they want with their inheritance. But for the period of uh, after the husband dies, you know, they have their idda, uh, and so during that time, they will keep themselves in their houses. فَإِنْ خَرَجْنَا فَلَا جُنَاهَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي مَا فَعَلْنَا فِي أَنفُسِهِنَّ There's no harm in what they do with themselves after that period. مِنْ uh, مَعْرُوفِ As long as it is appropriate. وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Allah is al is the one who has authority and he has wisdom. وَلِلْمُطَلَّقَاتِ مَتَاءٌ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ And for the divorced woman, she has her mata', her benefits, her security, her allowances, and all of that's paid for her in goodness. Meaning, up to what point? Up to the, uh, up to the, her idda. Okay? حَقًّا عَلَى الْمُتَّقِينَ This is the haqq that is due upon the people of taqwa. <coughs> Now, in the olden days, a woman would be able to get divorced, and she, if she had problems, she could go back to her family. There were tribes. So we do have to figure out, um, a lot of times, single are, the mothers are singles. Families really can't take, a, uh, take another person on. It's a difficult thing. And if the husband just leaves her, so, you know, there ha how do we deal with the situation? The ulama have to uh, come up with a good solution. كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ And this is how كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ This is how Allah share, sh clarifies for you His signs لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ So you will use your brain. So you will use your brains. And the purpose of this is to put a balance between worshipping and social issues. Uh, okay? And uh, the worshipping and social issues are interconnected by if you are really sincere to Allah, then you'll be careful how you act in society. If you're giving Allah his rights, then you'll, it'll be easier to give the rights to the people. If you're giving the rights to the people, it'll be easier to give Allah his rights. If you're nice and kind to your parents, then you can be nice and kind to other people. If you're nice and kind and feel that your parents have done good to you, then maybe then you'll be in a position to say, yes, Allah has done good to me. But if you feel your parents have never done any good to you, then you're not going to feel that Allah has done any good to you. So, كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ This is how Allah clarifies to you His signs. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَعْقِلُونَ Now a new topic is coming and this is going to be the end of this juz. Very, very interesting. Which is the Badr of Bani Israel. Okay? This is the Badr of Bani Israel. For 300 years, يَطِيهُونَ فِي الْأَرْضِ So they were lost in the desert for 300 years. Okay? <coughs> now they were lost in the desert for 300 years. And, you know, in this time, Bani Israel is just in the desert and their uh, other tribes are coming and raiding them and hurting them and, and all, they're in a terrible situation. So now this is what happens. Oh, sorry, this ayah uh, comes before that. Now, if death is going to come, it's going to come. You can even run away from death and think you ran away from death. It's going to come. And so this is referring to an event that happened in Bani Israel. Alam tara ila ladina kharaju min diyarihim. Did you not see the people that left their houses because there was a plague or something like this? Wahum alufun. There were thousands. Hadar al maut out of the fear of death. Fakala lahum hum Allah. And when they reached their place of safety, fakala lahum Allah mutu. Allah said to them, die. ثم أحياهم. Then Allah gave them life. إن الله لذو فضل على الناس ولكن أكثر الناس ولكن أكثر الناس لا يشكرون. Allah is very very kind and bountiful to but most people don't give thanks. They don't give gratitude. وقاتلوا في سبيل الله وعلموا أن الله سميع عليم. And so you should not fear fighting the path of Allah. If you're gonna die, you're gonna die. No matter where you are, you may think you're in the most secure place. You're gonna die. 
<coughs> so wa qatilu fi sabilillah wa alamu anna Allah samiun alim so this is the preparation for badr now now this is the event uh, Allah then says man dal ladhi yuklidu Allah qardan hasanan fa yudha'if lahu ad'afan kathira who is going to give a loan now jihad can't be just done by itself it needs money somebody has to spend money and resources so man dal ladhi yuklidu Allah qardan hasanan fa yudha'if lahu ad'afan kathira so then Allah will multiply for you the rewards of the loan that you give to Allah because this is for the sake of Allah wallahu yaqbidu wa yabsitu wa ilayhi turja'un Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who contracts, makes it less, or extends it. Wa ilayhi turja'un, and to you, to him you have to return back. Now here, this is about the elite of the Bani Israel, when they had now been, uh, after Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, they had now been tired of their situation, and they finally said to the Prophet of Allah, we want to do jihad, so that we can stand up in our feet, we want our self-determination, and so on and so forth. Alam tara ila ila malaim min Bani Israel. Did you not see that the leaders of Bani Israel min ba'di Musa after Musa alayhi salatu wasalam it qalu li nabiyyi lahum when they said to the prophet of that time ib'ath lana malakan nuqatil fi sabilillah. Why don't you appoint for us a king? We will fight behind him in the path of Allah. Qala hal asaytum in kutiba alaykum al qital. He said what would happen if you if you forsake like if you go back after qital has been ordained for after Allah says fight and then you don't fight hala saytu min kutiba alaykum al qital alla tuqatilu and then you don't fight qalu ma lana alla nuqatil fi sabilillah what is wrong with us that we wouldn't fight in the path of Allah qad ukhrijna min diyarina we've been kicked out of our houses wa abaina and our in our children you know falamma kutiba alayhim al qital when qital fighting has been prescribed for them tawallaw illa qalila minhum they all turn their backs except for a few of them. Wallahu alimun bil zalimin. Wa qala lahum nabiyuhum in inna Allah qad ba'atha lakum al taluta malika. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then said, qad qala lahum nabiyuhum, the Prophet of Allah said of that time, qad ba'atha Allah lakum al talut. Allah has made this man talut, your malik, your king. Now the elite, they had a problem with this. قالوا, How can he have kingship over us? عَلَيْنَا وَنَحْنُ أَحَقُّ بِمُلْكِ مِنْهُ We have more right to be a king. لَمْ يُعْتَ سَعَةً مِنَ الْمَالِ He has no wealth. Then he said, قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ اسْتَفَاهُ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah has chosen him وَعَلَيْكُمْ وَزَادَهُ بَسْطَةً فِي الْعِلْمِ وَالْجِسْمِ Allah has chosen him for you. And the wow here is wow tafsiri possibly. Because, the wow here is not and, because. وَزَادَهُ بَسْطَةً فِي الْعِلْمِ وَالْجِسْمِ Because he has extended him, given him more of body, his strong, and knowledge. وَاللَّهُ يُؤْتِي مُلْكَهُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah gives kingship to whoever he wills. مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ وَاسِيُونَ عَلِيمٌ And Allah's knowledge is extensive and Allah is, is, is extensive. قَالَ لَهُمْ نَبِيُّهُمْ إِنَّ آيَةَ مُلْكِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ التَّابُوتُ فِيهِ سَكِينَةٌ so then, you know, there was a sign, the, the Prophet of Allah says, this is a sign for his kingship, okay? And this is from where the idea of the Holy Grail and this thing comes from, that if it's with you, you'll win every war and so on and so forth. وَقَالَ لَهُمْ نَبِيُّهُمْ And the Prophet of Allah said, إِنَّ آيَةَ مُلْكِهِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَكُمُ التَّابُوتِ uh, that, that there will come to you a tabut, a, like a box, okay? فِيهِ سَكِينَةٌ And it is tranquility. مِنْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَبَقِيَ From your Rabb. وَبَقِيَّةٌ مِمَّا تَرَكَ آلَ مُوسَى وَآلَ هَارُونَ And it will have the things left over from the time of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam and Harun. تَحْمِلُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ تَحْمِلُهُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ And the angels will be carrying it. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَآيَاتٍ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Indeed, and this are signs for you if you are truly believers. Now, so the first problem they had, they couldn't accept his leadership. So some of the people, they just stayed behind because of this. Now the second test. So they're all, they're, they're, they wanted to fight, but now they're being tested. Okay. فَلَمَّا فَصَلَ طَالُوتَ بِجَنُودِ قَالَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مُبْتَلِيكُمْ بِالنَّهَرِ Now Talut said to his army, when they were right at that, uh, the river of Jordan, I believe, right there at the river, he said, now Allah is going to test you with this river. إِنَّ اللَّهَ مُبْتَلِيكُمْ بِالنَّهَرِ فَمَنْ شَرِبَ مِنْهُ فَلَيْسَ مِنِّي Whoever drinks of this water, he's not with me. Now imagine, uh, you're going for in the desert for jihad, and you're with a group of people, right? Now, there are going to be three types of people. Those people that don't drink the water. So when they move on, 
they don't have any feeling of that coolness of that water holding them back. Okay. Number two, those people that just take a little bit. But if those people that take a little bit, if they move forward, they're also still thinking. And third, they take it so much that they just, you know, they, they lost that, 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 um, the stress and they relaxed to the point where they can't move forward. This is what happens with desires also. So anyway, whoever drinks of this water is not with me. Whoever doesn't drink of this water, he's with me. Except also then, except for if you take a little bit in your hand and just into your mouth, just a little bit, it's fine. You're with me. They all drank all of the water. You know, they drank the water, except all of them drank it, except for a little bit of them. A little bit of the, some of the people didn't, most of them did. Now they come face to face. Now that majority of them stayed back now. Now this small group comes face to face with the army of Jalut, Goliath. Okay. Now when they come from, you know, they come in confrontation, see one another. So then they said, we don't have any strength today over Jalut and his army. Look at that army. Now even a smaller group amongst them. How many small groups have overtaken a large group? You have Afghanistan. The most probably, uh, in terms of technology, low technology society. It took away the British, took away the Soviet Union, and, and now America is also, uh, put in a position where it has to compromise. So, أَنَّهُمْ مُلَاقُوا كَمْ مِنْ فِئَةٍ قَلِيلَةٍ غَلَبَتْ فِئَةٍ كَثِيرَةً بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ How many small groups they have, they become overpowered by, uh, how many large groups become overpowered by a, uh, by a small group? Come in fiatin qalilatin. A fia a group fia qalil, small group. Ghalabat that overcomes fiatan kathira. A group that has large in numbers. Bidnillah by the permission of Allah. Wallahu ma'as sabirin. Allah is with those who have sabr. Falamma barazu. Falamma barazu. Falamma barazu jaluta wa junudi. Qalu rab. And so this is the dua that they did. And when they went, you know. Uh, uh, they went, uh, they were in front of one another, uh, another so they did this dua. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, pour sabr upon us. Just pour it down upon us. And make firm our footsteps and give us victory over the disbelief, those people who reject the truth. Okay? So they were eradicated, they were, they, they destroyed them by the permission of Allah. And Daud killed the Goliath. You know, Daud was an expert at uh, the, you can say, the slingshots, right? His slingshots were so good that he would put a stone in it. And even if, like, when he had his sheep, because Daud was actually not even part of this group. He was just, he just happened to come upon these two groups. There's Bani Israel here and Goliath here. And he was actually just a shepherd. And he just happened to come upon them. And, you know, he was an expert at slingshot. And he used to be so good that if somebody is going towards his sheep, like a, um, a wolf or a tiger or a lion, he would be able to hit, he would smash their faces with this slingshot, this thing. It's not really a slingshot. It's a thing with a rock. And, you know, he would throw it and it would hit its target exactly where he wanted and even even it's a, he he a statement from him is that I would even break the the mouths of the lions. And so now this man Goliath had this like armor, and all you could see was his eyes. And when Dawud threw that uh, the 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 thing he had, the stone he had with the the slingshot thing that I'm saying, and the rock went right into that eye, one of the sockets, and he just fell down and died. So, so they, they were eradicated by the permission of Allah. And Dawood killed Jalut. And Allah gave him kingship and wisdom. And Allah taught him whatever he taught him. He wanted to teach him. 
and if Allah would not push away one الناس بعضهم ببعض people one amongst the other لا فصلت الأرض ولكن الله ذو فضل على العالمين in this case and the truth came and pushed away the facade that was being caused by Goliath and his army and so this is the end of the second juz I also تلك آيات الله نطلوا نطلوها عليك بالحق these are the signs of Allah 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 we recite them to you بالحق وَإِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ And indeed you are amongst the messengers. Over here just one comment about the 30 Jews. 30 Jews, you know, uh, is not from the early, uh, the first 300 years of Islam. It's not in the Qur'an. The 30 Jews is not part of Qur'an itself. Nor was it given by the Prophet nor the companions of the Prophet Wasallam. Imam Jawzi has a book uh, called... Uh, Fununul Afnan, which is very interesting, which goes over the history of the 30 Juz. So these used to be different numbers, you know, 15, 17, 18, and then finally 30. Uh, and that was because of the idea that at least one Juz per day should be read. So this became this caught on, right? And then it became part of our categorization. But these this Juz per se is not, um, you can say, something that is uh, divine, right? It's just a man-made division to make the reading of Quran easy but it that man-made uh, division uh, is was not very well thought out in a sense because you know one of the juz one of the parts it's al hijr one ayah so just one it's it ends the surah and then one ayah and then so anyway the point is it's man-made and so we are going to inshallah ta'ala continue on juz number three tomorrow uh and jazakumullah khairan assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Make sure to subscribe today and make sure you like and make sure you leave your comments and ideas.